on. It's warming up. It's warming up. I believe we're feeding out to the people of the world. What's up, world? Okay, listen. First thing, yes, this is coming from the van. I'm in a completely different location from yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm on the hacienda today, actually, because I've been running around all day. So I didn't feel like driving out anywhere and getting all set up. So, boom, the beauty of the van. Um, so anyway, big thing I want to remind everyone, go to HankStrange.com, sign up for our email list, get up on that, look around the site. We have all the information that you need to find there. We've got information on getting uh, merch from us. We've got some cool stuff up there, patches, uh, stickers, etc. Um, there's also a link there to Ballistic Inc. that makes our t-shirts and other things that you guys can buy from Ballistic Inc. And, um, you know, you can support us. You got like watches, sunglasses, all kinds of cool stuff over there that you can get up on. So hangstrange.com, that's the place to go. Uh, let me see. Let me start loading the fellas up in here. Big shout out to Tusk Firearms Crypto Payments. That's who, um... That's who's sponsoring the show. We appreciate their sponsorage, or however, uh, 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 I don't know really what the right word for, I can't, it's not coming to me right now, but anyway, <laughs> we appreciate their support, so big shout out to Tusk. If you guys want to know more, just Google Tusk Crypto, um, and you know, you, you'll you be able to link up to their website and find out more info, or look for the podcast that we have with them. All right, let me get this kicked off. Let me hit the open here, and we'll get going with my guests. We've got Tony Simon. Obviously, there you go. 2A for everybody, 2A4E, as well as Guns for Everyone, Edgar Antillion, joining us. Yeah. So let's, let's kick the podcast off right now. Welcome back to the Hank Strange situation. Boom! Lifestyle All right, make sure you guys subscribe, smash the thumbs ups, ring the bell so you can be notified every time we go live and we are live. Come on, jazz hands. Jazz hands, dudes. Let's see the jazz hands. Hold on a second here. I got to switch. I got to... Oh, there goes the jazz hands. Oh, they're jazz handing it up. <laughs> these guys... These are jazz handing fools. They didn't even know what to do. Just... Yeah, just... You know, everyone out there right now is dizzy from those jazz hands. Awesome. All right, this is episode 728 of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Hank Strange. And as I said, my guests are Edgar and Tillion. There he goes. Yeah, buddy. What's up, man? Not much, man. I appreciate being uh, the invite and, and uh, just being here. Yes, appreciate thanks. It. thanks for coming back on on the show. Appreciate having you here, you know. Uh, one of these days I have to figure out how to get on your show, you know. Uh, hey, well, once we started back up, uh, you're on, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, we got to make that happen at some point. I, I, I mean, it's all me. It's all me. I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> it's all me. I'm hard due to pin down, but, you know, um, I do appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. And then, of course, we've got the man, the myth, the mountain. Joining us, Tony. <laughs> what's what's up, Tony? What's going on? I had to think about that one for a second. <laughs> what's going on, man? Hey, my speaker on because it's telling me it's off. Oh no, we can hear you. You can hear him, right, Edgar? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, we're, man, yeah, back. Uh, we're setting up for 2021. We have mm -hmm. an event every month now, and actually two coming up in uh, this month. One in Jersey, one in PA. And we have one coming up in July in Omaha, Nebraska. So 2A4E is killing it. Man, Omaha. In Omaha. In Nebraska, though, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll be at least 30 degrees in Nebraska. July, bro. In July, it's 30 yeah. degrees in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska, it's July. No. I'm just messing around. I'm assuming, you know, it better be at least 50. <laughs> I owe Greta Stromberg an apology if he's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that go global warming is uh is kicking butt. Shout out to all the folks out there. If you guys have any anyone needs any shout outs or anything or questions, let us know if you have questions for either one of these gentlemen. We we'll, we're gonna um deep dive into a whole bunch of things here. Whatever these guys want to talk about, to be honest with you. Um, do smash the thumbs up. As I said, share this with folks if you can. All of that helps. Um, and we appreciate it. I'm just throwing up all the, the, the folks out there. Uh, so let's see. Dan Hates You says, Oh, dang, look who the guests are. It's Captain Cravings and Crap Captain Cra Chaos. 
Oh boy. <laughs> um, do you, wait, who's, I have, I who's which Captain? Is which. Yeah, yeah that's which is which. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm personally the largest pound for pound firearms instructor in America. So okay, Captain you, you know what? Yeah, listen, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's going to challenge that. <laughs> oh, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. I mean, we also know my second hashtag is the largest pound for pound gun bunny in America. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I this. got this. There's definitely, <laughs> there's definitely sexy sexual chocolate all up in there. Oh yeah, yeah. For, sh- for sure, for sure. Wait, okay, here we go. Hold on, I've got, I'm having some switching issues going on here. All right, so let's see. So, so I'm, so I'm guessing that means that Edgar is Captain Chaos then. Captain Chaos, know. I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Oh man. Oh hey. man. So, um, let's see. Well, okay. So I know Tony mentioned some, um events that he's having do you want to tell people how they can get uh better info on those events tony before we go forward here yeah um i'm gonna put them all on diversityshoot.com okay um so i gotta talk to my website guy to get him to post those up uh the events are coming up later um so in the middle of the month Mm -hmm. so we got some time because of covid restrictions right now we're limited to 10 people in our pa location until i get word Okay. So as soon as I get word that we can increase, I'll bump up those numbers. Okay. And yeah. Jersey, reason I haven't had one in Jersey since last summer is because of COVID restrictions. Okay. Uh, they limit uh, New Jersey uh, gun ranges to 25% capacity. No range that exists, you know, that has been running can afford to have me come in and shut them down pretty much for a day. Yeah. I mean, it's it, tough. It, how, how are they even supposed to make money on 25% capacity? They don't care because uh, the governor Murphy is a yeah bitch, uh, uh-huh. and um, <laughs> what he knows is his the resistance to his uh, gun control bills are coming from ranges. I mean, that's where a lot of us headquarter. That's where a lot mm-hmm. of us come out at. That's where a lot of us meet at. Mm-hmm. And if he feels he can put them out of business, that's one less obstacle he has. And I'm like, well, you're kind of sort of wrong there, bro. Yeah. Look, they're ranges. But we can shoot at outdoor ranges that don't have capacity limitations. Yeah, and we're it's... depending upon right. that. Mm-hmm. We're pissed, bro. Yeah, <clears throat> and and the other part of that, you know, um, tell me if I'm wrong here. The other part of that is safety, right, guys? I mean, how how is it safe to have all these new shooters, yeah. these new gun owners? Yeah. And guess what? No, the the one place you would need to go to, maybe get, I don't know, get some training. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I have to actually Can't go come to. up with a person-to-person class mm-hmm. with certain pistols and all that until I can book time and arrange to have them do the actual trigger pulling. I have to teach firearm safety. I have to teach uh, marksmanship based fundamentals. And then, hopefully, we can get into a range and shoot real rounds. And I have to work on that here in Jersey because I have to book range time like everyone else now. You know what I mean? I don't have the range that I used to teach at because they can't allow classes there. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, okay, that sorry is... about that. I had to mute for a second. Lola, Lola's making noise. Lola's making noise. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I don't know. It's... Uh, I, I'm... You know, being gun guys... I don't want to act like I don't care about how this plays out because obviously I do care how it plays out. But man, there's there's like certain things just not meshing with these people, you know, and in, in all the things that they're saying and that they're looking. It just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. I, I, you would want people to get out to ranges, get more classes, get more yeah. education, figure out how to be safe. You no, know, because uh, as long as you have accidents and shootings. You can talk about how it's not needed yeah. and how dangerous it is. Yeah, but those people, those people, the 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 people who are doing that don't give a crap about laws, <laughs> safety, <laughs> laws. <clears throat> well, when yeah. we all sixty percent of the gun violence deaths mm-hmm. are suicide, and the only side that's doing anything about it is ours with classes yeah. and programs and everything else we're running. Yeah, they don't care about that. Uh, the other what thirty plus percent. It's gang violence. They're not doing anything about that, but we have people like Kevin Dixie, Maj, uh, mm-hmm. putting in work on mm-hmm. that side of it to get people to see the value of their own lives and the value of their own neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. 
we're the ones putting in the work for the majority of those gun violence statistics to turn them around because, of course, we care about human lives. Yeah. Same reason we carry a firearm is to protect people we love and care about. Yeah. I mean, I think it goes back. I think it goes back to what you said, that it doesn't fit their narrative because actually the government or the, even the politicians and the government is kind of separate and, and still the same issues. But they, they should be funding more stuff like what we do. They should be funding more conversations, more training, more ranges. You know, I mean, right? I know, I know there's, I know there's a lot of like, a, you know, uh, small government people out there. I'm one of those. But if money should be going anywhere, and all these bills that I see getting put forward, there's a whole ton of money that's getting carved out for the anti-gunners, for doing studies, for doing this thing and that thing. Why wouldn't you want? I mean, the analogy I always use is living here in Florida. Um, there's a lot of pools and there's lots of bodies of water around here. The first thing you should do with your kids here is teach them how to swim, you know, and teach them about water and how water can be dangerous and, and make sure that they know how to, you know, how to, to survive or how to, to function inside of water. Right. I mean, yeah. So, right, man. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think Edgar wanted to jump in here. Go ahead, Edgar. Sorry. Um, I, the, the, just to kind of backtrack a, a, mm -hmm. a little bit, I mean, I, I think we get to the point, though, where we have to make that decision. And this one's the, the tough one, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, we want to be, we don't want to be looked at as, as the idiots. And, and if we do it collectively and if we do it uh, smart, then, then, then it all works out. The problem is, is that our side is the one that says come and take it. And we're the ones that have tolerated the shutdowns more than anybody else. Um, if, if you go to ranges all across the nation, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I had uh, the privilege of doing last year, going mm -hmm. to a few across the, the U.S., and a lot of them are, are really strict on, oh, my God, I, I need to have you wear a mask, and I need to have you wear a mask, and, and shutdowns and limitations. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 I get it, but at, at what point do we say, you know what, I have to risk it all, because mm -hmm. freedom is on the line here. Um, if we're so big on... on come and take it. I mean, we are literally watching this nation become a communist country within a year. Mm -hmm. And everybody has sat back and like, yeah, no big deal. We're still the freest nation on earth. Uh, yeah, no big deal. We, we still have our freedoms. Like it, it, it's all the fucking pipe dream at, at this point. Like, but are you so, so you're saying that because are you saying that there's not enough people resisting the mask oh, stuff? I, or? No, it's not just the mask thing. Okay. It's not, it's, it's not just the mask thing. It's the lockdowns. It, it's the we we need to do what what, what our homie up in, in New York did. The the gym guy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know his name, um, but the gym guy. He said was it Jersey you know, or I, New York? He's Jersey. in New York. He's in Jersey. I thought he was in upstate New York. No, uh, he's he's another one of those dudes that's a victim of the pettiness of our governor. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, because there was one in New York. He beat, uh, and I'll look it up here in a little bit. But he beat New York. Um, he had like there was one in New fights. York. I think there. I yeah. think there's probably Jer a Jersey situation going on, and a New York situation. Because I think the Jer the New York guy, it yeah, didn't, this guy's in Buffalo. Yeah, didn't the New York guy like yeah. run into a cop or something when they were trying to stop him from getting to his gym? Someone, someone will, someone will uh, right. hit us up with that. Cody Milbacher. Let me just get to this, and we'll get right back to everything. He says, yeah. "What's wrong with you, Hank? You keep looking at the left." <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> um, there's screens over here, so my I've got I've got the camera set up here, and I'm looking at the dudes right here. But I've got screens showing me things here, so I'm you know because I'm controlling the whole show, so I'm just checking. Right. To I'm I'm using a little tiny MacBook Air because I'm in the van, and a and a MacBook Air. This MacBook Air is 13 inches, which. You know, as she said, is not big enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> she do be saying that. <laughs> so um, that's okay. That's why. Okay, enough of the distractions. Um, I think a lot of people. The first of all, so I know f folks were mentioning that Texas. I think Texas lifted uh, lockdown restrictions. What was the other state that did it? Um, uh, there. There's a couple of states that have been lifting it lately. Texas did. Florida has didn't really have those kinds of restrictions for a long time. 
maybe in the beginning we had some kind of restrictions. Yeah. Florida's been out of that. So you don't see a lot of what's happening um, in a lot of places, uh, especially what's happening in New York and New Jersey, necessarily happening here in Florida. Right. But um, I don't know if the I don't know that the because I think what you're trying to say there is that the gun guys are accepting that. I don't know that gun guys per se are going for that. I don't I don't really I've seen well, the gun guys. To, if you go to the range, if you if you go mm -hmm. to there's there's a couple here in Colorado, not not mm -hmm. all of them, but there's a couple here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. If you go there, mm -hmm. like everybody's religiously following the, these unconstitutional mandates in Colorado. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean it, it's it's individual ranges. There's 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 plenty that don't follow it, um, but there's plenty of, of that do. I mean, if you go, um, I was one in, in a couple out in uh, Nevada, and Nevada kind of the same situation. You go to the range and you have people waiting outside. You you go to gun stores and there's people waiting outside in line because oh we don't want to we don't want to violate the 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 governor's mandates and stuff like that. So. The, these are these are the type of people that, that I'm talking about. Like overall, there's not enough resistance hmm. to even to even fight to uh, to a certain degree. Because you, you look at it, and if if I do something, then I'm the the one crazy guy that just looks like an idiot, right. and then everybody chastises the one crazy. I idiot. haven't. So yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I haven't right. really seen that. I haven't, yeah. you know, I don't see that here in gun stores in Florida. There's, yeah. I mean, I haven't been into a single gun store here in Florida that's making anyone wear a mask. But, you yeah. know, that's, that's, I'm not trying to say that that's indicative of everything else happening around the country. I think it's just, like, there's probably certain parts of Florida that they are making people wear masks and doing all of that. But, like, around where I live, there's none of that going on. Yeah. No, even when I was in Texas, when I mm -hmm. was in Texas, because everybody will cry, oh, it's Democrats, it's Democrats. But when I was mm -hmm. in Texas, um, there was plenty in the Dallas, uh, Dallas Fort Worth area where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you got to throw on that mask, you got to throw on that mask, uh, and limitations. Oh, we could only allow so many people at a time, because um, that, that's where I did some some training mm -hmm. was out in in Texas, and it was kind of the same situation. What, where, um, so what what part of Texas was it? Uh, both Dallas and Fort Worth. Hmm. Dallas, I could believe. I'm not sure, like... But it shouldn't right. matter. Like, realistically, it shouldn't matter. Like, if, if you're gun people and if you're for freedom, mm -hmm. um, if you're the gun, come and take it. If you're selling shirts that say come and take it, but yet you're telling people, hey, let's wear the mask, then it's just like, I don't believe you. Like, I don't... Yeah. Like, no, I'm, I'm with you. I think... And I don't know what's happening in those stores. The yeah. the guys who I know who know, who own gun stores are not doing that. But but Good. but that's not. I'm not trying to say that to counter your point Correct. because I think your point Correct. makes sense. I've heard there was um there was someone and I don't know what state it was. It could have even been Florida. There was a guy who told me that his gun store actually kicked him out because he refused to put on a mask. And he gives these guys a lot of money, and he was upset about that. Yeah. So I would assume that, yes, there are owners of gun stores that are going along with that for one reason or another. And I, and I would agree with you. Why, why would they be going with that, you know? I mean. Yeah, because at some point you have to make that decision, right? Like, I, I get it. It's your livelihood, and that's how you make money. But mm -hmm. at some point you have to – it's kind of like us instructors. A lot of us instructors, we, we get shit talked to because, oh, mm -hmm. you want – concealed carry class mandates because that's how you make your living like no any real instructor that's really for freedom will say i'd much rather have constitutional carry and i'm okay with losing a big chunk of my business because freedom is more important than that yeah and you see a lot of instructors fighting for that stuff yeah so it, it's kind of the, the same energy it's like i get it you're losing a big chunk of your your livelihood but like is it worth risking that to to stand up for your freedom and for me personally freedom goes above everything because we if we don't have freedom if we're okay with these mandates give it 10 20 years and and we're we're going to be told where we're working and we're going to be told what industry uh we we're going to work in and what our job title is and mm -hmm. and that type of stuff yeah um this, tony go ahead this is the downside to licensing this is the yeah. downside to having the government in charge of allowing you to run your business mm -hmm. because they can shut you down. Mm -hmm. And again, I live in petty ass Jersey yeah. where they will, they shutting down a gym, bro, a gym where people get up and wipe everything down anyway. 
at least you know from what i remember oh man <laughs> it's there's so many things wrong yeah there's so many things wrong with trying to go after the gym but look it, the same this same conversation i would agree with like i'm an ffl right an slt so the the conversation and i put out some stuff um that goa put out there about hr um eight and i think hr 1446 which are all background check or closing loopholes kinds of nonsense now as a as a gun store owners which i don't have a physical store that people have to go to uh, but and by the way edgar i don't make anyone wear masks around me and I, nice. I i don't wear them i do wear them if i go someplace and i have to like i go to a doctor's office or something like that and they're like okay you know you got to put this thing on um whatever if that makes them feel comfortable but here's the thing all of that background check stuff that they're gonna do would only make yeah. gun store owners and people like myself make more money because it's going to force people to have to go to someone like myself or those right. folks and pay money in order to get this background check. But I don't right. support it, and and I would right. hope that uh, that gun stores out there don't support it either, right? You would hope that nobody supports it. Yeah, yeah, I would hope that no one would support that, right? right? So, you know, there's there's a lot of things. Um, <sighs> there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's going on out there that yes i mean we're we're a, over a year now into the lockdowns two week lockdown yeah uh -huh. we're, we're over a year <laughs> into it and and some places are suffering badly you know some places worse than others some places are doing better um right. you know but in the whole like we're we're st we're, we're in march of 2021 and these people are still like, oh, there's, you know, there's still more COVID. People got, we got to lock, we got to do more lockdowns. We, we didn't, we're not out of the woods yet. You know, now people are getting anal swabbed for COVID tests. <laughs> you know. And the ridiculousness is, <clears throat> you've heard them contradict themselves over and over and move the goalpost over and over, and you're still buying into the bullcrap they're saying. I'm like, dude, it's not true. It's 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 like it's it's to control you. It's supposed to be two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. <clears throat> and I said it then, I said it on my show. Governors aren't gonna give up that power. If they can control nope. you like that, petty politicians in towns aren't gonna give yeah. up that power. You gave them way too much. And you have to strip it away from them. Yeah. But so many people are buying into it. It's that whole a person is smart, but people are stupid. You've convinced them that they need to keep this mask on their face. And now it's gotten so dumb as they're saying, well, you should do it to have other people not feel badly about wearing one. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was ridiculous. Right. It made my job to make you feel better about you being stupid. Yeah. Let me, so let me throw this up here for you guys, just to get the uh, audience involved in this. Cause I know Edgar especially loves this when he comes on. He likes, you know, love it. Yeah, he, he, he likes uh the <laughs> he likes the nice back and forth with the people. Um so Brick says, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Would you wear body armor in a gunfight? Question mark. Um and then then the the response to that is then why wouldn't you wear a mask to try to keep a virus from spreading? Just asking. So, so who wants I, to take I don't that? Wear... I don't wear daily body armor, so the, the quick answer there is is no. Um, obviously, there, there's if we're going to play the the problem with with the defensive uh, analogy there is there's there's over a hundred thousand different little variables that can come into play in any given circumstance. Uh, so if, if we're going to go down that rabbit hole, then I guess wearing a mask is like wearing a, a body armor because I could get shot in the face and then body armor doesn't do a damn thing um or i could get shot in, in in the artery in the neck and then body armor doesn't mean a damn mm -hmm. thing um so mm -hmm. so no I mean, me personally like no i i I'm not wearing body armor right now I, I don't see any of you guys wearing body armor so i think that the short answer is no for all three for of all we know tony could have on body armor you don't know right now don't 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 judge him <laughs> my body is the armor <laughs> Um, <laughs> in that gunfight, if I have only a two percent chance of getting killed mm -hmm. or less, mm -hmm. then um, no, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so 
uh, let me, there's a whole bunch of different things to this. Um, so I don't care if someone wears a mask. You have right. the right to wear a mask. Okay. The problem comes in when you're forcing other people to do right. something. And when, so, and if, if you're trying to say that people have to do that to, to actually have an effect on what's going on here, I don't, I don't really believe it for a lot of different reasons, right? Now, they, f they started out with this thing saying you don't have to wear a mask. No, it just doesn't make any difference. They did that because they didn't have enough masks. Now, they're like, okay, well, you have to wear a mask because if you have COVID, that helps stops it from spreading to other people, right? So now, so now we don't know who has COVID, so therefore everyone's guilty, everyone's got to wear it. Well, it's actually not stopping a damn thing. Nothing. Right. Because it's not capable of it. And wearing a mask is not enough. So you would have to wear basically a space suit. So there's people wearing a mask. There's people wearing face shields, but the face shield is no mask. I don't know how that's stopping anything, you know, but a face shield and a mask, all of that. If you're breathing, <laughs> those things are really not stopping the spread of microscopic of a microscopic virus floating around in the air, which ultimately, ultimately we all have to get. If people are at high risk, then those people should probably um, definitely take precautions and all that kind of stuff when they're out there. But ultimately, this thing is not going away, obviously. So we yeah. all have to get it and we have to get over it. You know, and well, we have to some, move on. As, as someone that's high risk um, and work in a high risk environment, mm -hmm. you know what my job is? Mm hmm. Uh, as, as me personally, take care, take care of myself and leave other people alone. So yeah. yes, I wash my hands. I put the the alcohol away. But I work in a prison, bro. I got way more deadly stuff in that place than Corona. Mm -hmm. Well, and then at, at some point you have to figure out: is everything that I'm doing really worth the the trouble? The, does it make sense? It's kind of like in the defensive situation. Like I have to. Um, especially with the weirdos that mm -hmm. like to, to soup up their gun, like is, mm -hmm. is one tenth of a second really worth you risking your, your trigger not working the way it's supposed to, your internal safety mechanism not, not working the way it's supposed to, just for, for the what ifs. Mm -hmm. So if we're, we're going to compare it like is destroying the entire economy and, and having people not, mm -hmm. not be able to eat, pay rent, and, and go into bankruptcy and, and shit like that. Like is it really worth doing what we're doing? Um, the, the vaccines are already what close to 1200 people dead from that stuff. I, I thought that if it, it was all about saving one person, then, then why are we like entering into another realm where we're right. still killing people? But also, uh, what about all the people who, because they shut down the hospitals, didn't go to hospitals and catch problems that they had? That would have otherwise been yeah. detected had we not shut Correct. down the hospitals. And then those people right. got got sick unknowingly. Right. Yeah. And then died. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's a ton of that going names. around. <laughs> yes, I can name names. Cancer treatments that were put off because the hospitals were closed. Due to COVID. Um, surgeries that were put off. And that's like that's a quality of life thing. If you can't lift your arm and you're in constant pain, but they put it off because of COVID. Meanwhile, the hospital's empty. See, you can't have it. My whole pr problem with it is this. The people that keep telling me masks are important and masks work won't recognize the mismanagement, lies, and double speak right. that have been done and we've heard over the last year. And then when they go to cut checks in the stimulus package, you're only getting a small percentage of the money that they jacked out of your taxes and they help pay pet projects in other countries. Yeah. I'm like, listen, no, we can't just go, well, listen to them on this one thing and ignore everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, a couple of different things here that, um, you know, that I would want to point to, um, you know, now I totally lost my train of thought. Hold on. Let me throw this up. Let me throw this up while I'm trying to get it back. Kevin, the tack daddy says, if you have to go to the hospital for treatment and the policy is no guns and must wear a mask, do you go home? And he says he's here for Tony. So there you go. Um, if you have to go to the hospital Hold for on. treatment and the policy is no guns and you must go home, it is no guns and must wear a mask, do you go home? Um, if, if, if I'm in if, a hospital... <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Man. No, no, no. I mean, I think 
you know, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward, right? If these are the rules and you have to get treatment and you can't get treatment without going around these rules, you it's up to you. You, you have the right yeah. to, to not get treatment and die or whatever happens to you. Oh, you know, and go home it, or you can you can put down your guns or yeah. whatever and go in put on your mask and go in. Yeah. yeah. 100 percent. Look, you have to do what's important for you. My yeah. problem is when you dictate others behavior, you close down business, you mm -hmm. wreck the U.S. economy. People have to do what they have to do for themselves. And my mm -hmm. mom, she's also high risk. She's also a school teacher that teaches special needs kids. You're not going to tell those kids they can't touch someone. You know what I mean? She has one on one with special needs kids that she mm -hmm. wipes down, wipes their noses. My mom's afraid to go to work because she's high risk. She will. She was in the hospital and we thought we were going to lose my mom in 2017, 2017. Um, no. Mm -hmm. So my mom stays in the house. My mom does things to keep herself safe. And, and I'm yeah. fine with that. So, but you know, you shouldn't be able to close every store down. Right. And the other thing I just remembered is this. Where's the data to prove these things, right? So, for yeah. example, the most restrictive states still have problems. California, you know, New York City, the, the states Correct. that are really restrictive when it comes to those masks, if this worked, it would have done something. There's tons of people out there that wear masks on a regular basis and go places where people wear masks and stuff like that, and they still got COVID. So... Obviously, yeah. you know, now do listen, like I said in the beginning, you have the right to wear the mask, even if it's a pacifier, even if it makes you feel better. And of course, if it does somehow slow down, if you have COVID and you have to go out for whatever reason and it does something to slow something down, which I <laughs> if you're breathing, <laughs> I'm going to doubt that. Right. And if you're making if you've got if you're making skin contact with things, if your eyes aren't somehow you know, in some kind of special bubble um, where they could come into contact with those things. I don't really know. But when we look at when we look at the data, we're not stopping people from getting COVID. Correct. Now, uh, one thing I do like some of the things that people are forced to do. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all people nasty. You didn't wash your hands. <laughs> you your ass to work when you're sick and cough and lick everything. You suck. <laughs> Clean up. Remember, man, being the shot show last year? Dude, I'm watching people come in and out of the bathroom and just walk out of a stall and open the door. And I'm sitting there walking around with my Purell and I'm taking those. Uh, uh, Purell is going to cause the zombie apocalypse. I got to say that. Yeah. But I had to do it. <laughs> My whole thing is I can't get sick. I have bronchitis. I was mm -hmm. I had pneumonia and was out the entire summer of 2019 out of mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not playing with this. But I take the precautions I feel I need to take. Mm -hmm. I don't need the government telling me what to do, especially, again, when you're destroying, destroying small businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the basis of all of, of all freedom, right? It is uh, I'm gonna do what I do, and you're gonna do what you do. You don't have to like what I do. I don't have to like what you do, as long as we respect what we do, um, or or respect the freedom to do it. Um, I should mm -hmm. say. Yeah. So uh, that's that's kind of the basis of all. all yeah, I mean, uh, of all freedoms. Yeah, what we're talking about is not so much the masks, okay? Correct. Honestly, I really don't care about the masks. I do care Correct. about people's. Uh, freedoms being infringed upon and in a in a massively destructive way a lot of lots of kids out there who aren't going to school and who are missing out on things that they need to to formulate who they who they will become as adults and all that kind of stuff they're not getting that because they're not going to school people aren't working uh, people are going out of business I don't care what kind of stimulus checks they put out there they cannot stop what's happening um, even in the state of Florida, I've used this as an example lately, uh, Best Buy, which is a national company, and Florida's open, Best Buy laid off half of their people. Yeah. This doesn't just go away. It's not going to be a flipping of a switch. Yeah, maybe if we did it the two weeks out or within a month, yeah. But we're a year deep, and, and some of these um, little fiefdoms haven't figured out how they would open up. I'm like, what, what's taking you so long? What does the CDC do the rest of the year? When I was in the Marine Corps uh, during the Gulf War, I was in a nuclear, biological, and chemical unit. 
they told us, they showed us, believe me, I was paying attention because this was during the Gulf War. I was really paying attention. At no time did they say when your mop level four suit goes down or or your mask goes down and you need to change filters, put this piece of toilet paper over your lips (laughs) and nose. And you'll be just be as good. good. No, that's not how you stop biological <laughs> aging. I mean, we recovered head to toe in rubber and charcoal filled suits mm-hmm. with, 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 with freaking uh, filters. Well, yeah. One filter yeah. in the front. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, dude, that's not how that stuff works. Okay. Mm-hmm. Give people a choice. Open the place back up. Understand that people are going to get sick. We have the facilities to take care of it. There was no giant curve. Florida's been open. Uh, California has been closed and the numbers are about the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, New York, New Jersey, dude, you messing up a lot of stuff and people that can't or are high risk. Good. We can take care of them, but we'd have money coming in and businesses will be open mm-hmm. and, and there won't be the depression. There won't be the uh, domestic violence. There won't be this child abuse. All that stuff is on. Hu- the numbers are huge on mm-hmm. this. We're yeah. going to be paying for this for decades. Yeah. But this is probably the plan. This is how you demoralize people. This is how you make people start feeling like prisoners and things like that. This is how you take away identity. And I think that's why it's important, you know, to have the conversation. I I was saying that today. I was talking, I think I was talking to Flying Rich today about this, that, you know, when you're wearing a mask, when this is covered right here, it's very hard to communicate for us culturally. I don't know of some culture. There's probably some culture out there that loves to communicate with people like that. But if I can't see your mouth, like, are you laughing, smiling, smirking, you know, frowning? That all has to do with communication. And it's just even when we go out there, it's a way to make us separate from each other. Right. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Oh, and uh, John Crump, the sexy black man in the middle, is uh, Amaj Ture. Uh, I'm, on the cover. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just joking. We all look alike. You don't have enough dreadlocks to be Maj. Let's, like, let's. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there, you yeah. Go. there you go. You're going to be twisting Holy that shit. for a while, son. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh. Like, yeah, so yeah. that was that was from that was from John Crump. He gave us five bucks. He's asking who's that sexy black man in the middle. The man in the middle. Uh, we should really make Edgar like part of a, you know, uh, some kind of Oreo. But I mean, technically, it's all br- it'll be all brown. It'll be a complete yeah, chocolate. Technically, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of those chocolate, chocolate Oreos, you know. Yeah, yeah. Chocolate, chocolate, Mexican chocolate. Light chocolate. Uh-huh. <laughs> light, light yeah. chocolate. <laughs> um, Scorched Earth Firearm says, I just get mad when people that don't take precautions get on social media and ask for prayers like we're supposed to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Rod and, Mills. And, yeah. And I'm talking about that, that. too. Yeah. As, as someone that's high risk that hates it. Now, I live in Jersey, dude. I have to do this. Let's mm-hmm. just say for a variety of reasons, I got to follow the rules. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, I don't agree with them. And if I didn't have to, I would not wear this crap out in public. Mm-hmm. But I have reasons I had to wear it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, including the job that I have that... Whatever. Understand. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a big deal. Especially with my wife. She's high risk. My mom's high risk. Dude, I gotta do what I gotta do to keep insurance on these people that I care about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think the point I think the point here, the important point, um, and Brick says it here, he says, I just want this mess to go away and everyone to get back to living. Give us us free. Give us us free. <laughs> us yeah. free. The famous yeah. quote from uh Amistad. <laughs> oh wow, really? And, and Jaima and Hansu. Remember the, did anyone watch Amistad? Oh dude, I thought that was Jar Jar Banks. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, just let us just let us be free, please. Okay? The people who are high risk don't have to go out or they could do all the things they want to do. But let just take people off the restrictions. The stores that want to get all crazy and put restrictions, well, good luck to you. You're gonna go out of business. It's fine. You you know, you can make right. those choices. But, you know, this, the country has to get opened up and and we need to go back to business here. 
So we're, we're always going to have the, the crazy thing about this is that we're always going to have viruses. We're always going to have threats. We've always had this stuff. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we're, yeah. it's, we're probably talking around in circles here on it. So, right. um, let me see. Okay. What else is going on here? Um, I was so, asking. Go ahead, Edgar. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. No, I was. I was. I was going to say that I was asking you behind the scenes about that lawsuit that you had going on with the sheriff yeah. up there in Colorado. Was was what's the updates on that? So, just a uh, quick recap for those that that are unaware and and haven't heard. So, last year during the COVID stuff, before uh, when everything was getting shut down, nobody really knew what the hell was going on. Um, we decided to start doing uh, COVID modified classes. Uh, the state of mm -hmm. Colorado um, doesn't really have any real training requirements other than an entire class cannot be done via the internet. So you could do portions of it uh, via the internet. So we're like, well, even even people who, who are gun people are, are kind of like, what the fuck's going on with COVID? Because again, this was March last year when, when it all kind of, hit the fan here in the u.s mm -hmm. uh, so we st started doing these COVID modified classes people would come in and one of the sheriffs here well we are a, a shell issue state uh, the state decides what the regulations are not the sheriff's not. the only thing that the sheriff does is they're pencil pushers i mean mm -hmm. there's really no better way of saying it other than they are literally pencil push pushers in this process they don't make the rules they're not authorized to make the rules so a sheriff, a Republican sheriff, decided that he didn't like it, um, and uh, we tr we tried to to talk to this individual behind the scenes, um, just like we talked, because he wrote on a, a statewide email saying, "Hey, this is how we feel about this person," and he he wasn't too kind about me. Coincidentally, um, hmm. uh, he's friends with uh, a competitor of ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, like did you do something personally to these uh, sheriff people? No, no, no. He just happens to apparently be friends with, with um, or he got tipped off by somebody who has, has not liked uh, Guns for Everyone for a very, very long time. Um, but anyways. Um, yeah, you. you uh... Every other sheriff that we talked to was like, mm -hmm. yeah, this guy's full of shit. You guys are good to go. Uh, you guys are meeting the, the legal requirements, especially with what's going on. Mm hmm. And I'm talking about statewide sheriffs who are like, yeah, you guys are good to go. No, not a big deal. Um, so we try to work with Larimer County. Uh, we we have the emails uh, on how we try to let them know, hey, these, these, this is the fucking law. This is you, like you don't get a say in any way, shape mm -hmm. or form. It specifically says in our law in 1812-201, it says uh, subsection three, uh, the General Assembly does not delegate to the sheriffs the authority to regulate or restrict the issuance of permits. Mm -hmm. They don't have that right in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So in Colorado this, uh, Constitution, correct mm -hmm. in our state law, that, that mm -hmm. that's the way it reads. Uh, they don't have a say, mm -hmm. and and we don't have again, we don't have real training requirements. No curriculum that we have to follow. There's no. It's basically just show up to a fucking class. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, obviously, we do a lot more than just that, but that, that's that's the. The legalities of it so uh we didn't come to a conclusion with this uh, sheriff and so we we um we submitted our our lawsuit uh, against that individual um i'd say about august of last year mm -hmm. and uh they obviously uh filed for a motion to dismiss which was denied uh, and then uh, we just went through the discovery process, which in that discovery process, they presented evidence, which actually helps us because they, they presented an email where they were demanding us to do the classes a certain way, which is, again, in violation of, uh, of our state law. So um, that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, the next step is, is trial. The next step is, is our trial date. Okay. Um, but you don't know what your trial date is yet, right? Not as not as of right okay. now. We, we okay. do not know what our trial date is. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just want to uh, keep up with that whole situation. Kind of crazy that they're making you go through that. I hope that you have some legal recourse to like recover um, your the the you know the money that you had to put forward here to fight this case. I don't know how that works in. Uh, Colorado. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of what we're we're going to be working, on, especially because Colorado got rid of uh, qualified immunity. Mm -hmm. 
So Colorado got rid of that. Mm. So so if we decided to go after this individual personally, um, huh. we, we, we are... Why are they even open. taking this chance? What's wrong with these people then? And, and, I mean, I'm, I'm why, why, you, This is like a personal thing. This is not... Like, at least back off. Like, okay, listen, we're wrong. Yeah, go ahead. You do you. But it's like, no, we're going to shut you. We're going to try to do everything we can to create problems for your business. And if you read the deal. emails, if you read the emails, there was days where I was like, I feel like I'm on this, this like, you know, those weird shows where, where the, the sane individual gets put, put in a fucking crazy room. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm the same person. Like, and everybody's like, no, you're fucking going batshit crazy. Like, I would read this emails. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're literally telling me you're, you're okay with breaking the law. And you understand the law, but you're going to violate the law, and you don't give a shit about the law. And, and the craziest thing, everybody's like, oh, he's a Republican, he's cool, like, he's getting like, no, this this is, like, look, look at the emails. Like, it, it's been pretty crazy. Like, it's been pretty fucking crazy. He's obviously abusing his power over there. Oh, um, my God. When does this sheriff run for office again? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, this might be a good thing to find out and then uh, support someone <laughs> running again. I mean, why not? It's yeah. crazy. Well, here's the thing. You're going to have to hit him up during the primary. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to hit him during the primary where you can select another Republican because mm -hmm. regardless, the Republican Party is going to back whoever the Republican candidate is. Mm -hmm. um, and it sucks. Edgar has to go through this because this is what we live with in New Jersey. This is what we live but, with. But they're covered kind of like by the law in Jersey, though, right? No, they're not. They're not? No, okay, so it's the same kind of situation? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you have 30 days to approve or disapprove mm -hmm. a firearms ID card. Jersey City's mayor and police chief laugh and say that it takes up to a year in Jersey City. It's the law. It's 30 days. There's no other way it's written. Mm -hmm. And they laugh at it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's... When people tell me, you know, well, the cops will never do, I'm like, don't tell me what cops will never do. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what cops will never do. I'm, I'm living in a state where they blatantly bl mm -hmm. break law. Yeah. Like, it's even something that you misinterpret. It says 30 days, and they did it in the 60s. <clears throat> because back then, you'd have to mail stuff back and forth. Well, this is 2020, bro. Uh, hours it takes mm -hmm. to get a, a background check done. Mm -hmm. That's it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and it's always, it's, it's so many, they have 10 excuses. The excuses are so commonplace that Evan Knappen, who's a Second Amendment lawyer, uh, a lot of people know him here, and he's taking courses, uh, you know, whatever. He's a Second Amendment lawyer. He wrote mm -hmm. a book and has all 10 excuses in the book. So as they were denying me my bull crap, I was just checking them off and I was posting it up online. I became such a pain in the ass in my local PD that the second time I went in, they ran my stuff through. But they still harassed me. Mm -hmm. And I know the law. And I hit them up with it. Hey, 30 days, right? And they were like, yeah, well, come back in about a, a, a six weeks and we'll let you know. See you next week. Mm -hmm. And I will go in the very next week. And then they hit me up with this. Oh, you have an arrest on your record in 1994. If you can get us paperwork that showed that was cleared up. I was like, this is my fourth fourth time coming to you guys for my pistol purchase permits. How's this? Whatever you had to do the other three times, you do it this time. time. <laughs> you got 30 days. Mm -hmm. See you Monday. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the problem, right, is we, we see this all across the nation, and, and thank God for a firearms policy coalition, thank God for gun owners of America, um, for for organizations that are actually doing stuff. I know when I, I first came out with, with this stuff, uh, Gun Owners of America was one of the very first ones. Uh, in fact, I was on the phone with Eric Pratt, like, hey, what can we do to, to help you out? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, realistically, we already had an attorney that we were already paying so goa really couldn't do anything but these people would have stepped in and um i get asked a lot like who who do we who do we support like who do we throw our money to like fpc you see the amount of lawsuits these, these, these like they are suing every motherfucker out there um that shit's impressive that, that, that's what we got to do there's a lot of people who are just like oh i, I belong to a 2a organization um okay what, what have they done we have one here locally and i reached out to them like hey i need help and like nope uh we're, we're not going to do anything um but here's 
Hey, here's our sweet ass submachine guns that we just bought um, for our collection. <laughs> hey, here's our our sweet ass fucking uh, uh, Rove mobile that we just bought for for our our collection. And is this the NRA? Is this sounds like no? It's not the NRA, but it, 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 they're they're kind of doing the same thing as the mm -hmm. NRA, but on the local level. Yeah. Um, By the way, I, I, I this is a rumor. This is a rumor yeah. that I heard today that I should just put out before I forget. That's why I'm throwing this out there. I, I hear that we're gonna hear um some some kind of like big news coming out from the NRA direction in the next uh probably in the next two weeks. That'd be that'd be amazing. I'll so let everyone that, speculate on what that is right now. But so on, yeah. on that though, I, I just mm -hmm. want to throw out there that mm -hmm. uh, Guns for Everyone National is in existence. It has been in existence for a few months now. Guns for Everyone National is a national nonprofit organization that certifies farms instructors. We operate national farms competition as well. We're essentially the the alternative to the NRA for mm -hmm. training and competition. We we're not a lobbying organization. We're not any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the membership fees and donations that go to Guns for Everyone National goes to support uh, good education, get good trainers. There's a lot of uh, instructors out there that are still working the nine to five, can't afford uh, to go through training programs and. That type of stuff. So we help fund that, uh, and obviously with the competitions as well. So gfenational.com for anybody who's who's interested in that. But if the, if if, if, the, if there's going to be NRA news, uh, I, I I'd be an idiot if I didn't mention that there is an alternative organization out there for training. Absolutely. Uh, which is Guns for Everyone National. Gfenational.com. Yeah. Is the website. Now, how closely with the Russians do you guys get involved? Super. I mean, do you guys like Russian do. femme fatales? Is what I'm oh trying to say. Oh my god! Like it just that's all we do, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What Russian kind of suits? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to know what kind of custom suits <laughs> does it have involved in, in the situation over there? You know. <laughs> Ivana humps a lot. <laughs> Chief instructor Ivana humps a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an actual character. That's from uh, that's from uh, what you call it? Um, <laughs> really? Gold member. Uh, yeah, look, Ivana hump a lot. That's uh, Ivana hump a lot was in um, what's his Austin Powers? Oh yeah, Austin, 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 Austin yeah, Powers. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Austin Powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a star. <laughs> Ivana Humps a lot was an I'm a star. Yeah. John Crump gave us a couple of... <laughs> he said, gave us two bucks here. He says, Hank, no, see if you can get it out of him. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I would invite you guys to speculate what that uh, NRA, possible NRA news is. Okay, I know what I hope it is, but I, I know... Go ahead. Hit us with it. And it's pumpkin head stepping down. It's mm. Wayne mm. Lapierre no longer being executive mm. vice president. Interesting. Um, if, 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 if it, it is, I will blink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, blink a lot you, if you know what it is. <laughs> you know, uh, they, I mean, I, I'm just going to mm. uh, play conspiracy theorist here mm. and, and he probably asked for a lot of money and were like, you know what, I'm, I'm your fucking headache, but I need some more suits. Uh, how about you cut me a check for fucking two, three mil, and then I'll, I'll just step down and call it good. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking it's got to be more than two or three mil, but yeah, yeah. I, I believe that somebody might have went, you know what, we'll put some money together, and here, here, yeah. just go. Yeah, I don't know. So here's the thing. The weird thing about that, right, is like... I don't know he, who he would be asking for. I mean, he's the one basically running the NRA, right? I mean, essentially, yeah. Essentially, this is family. like this is like we were talking about Russia. This is basically like Putin in Russia. To to give a have... power for the largest lobbying organization in the entire fucking world. Mm -hmm. After how long has he been in? Since the uh, mid nineteen ninety one, he was uh, executive vice president. Since the early 90s, he's been in that position, mm -hmm. and nobody's been able to fucking take him off of that shit. Um, I, That's I'm, just, he had the machinations in place to actually stop that. Yeah, that's um, great. They've changed, I mean, they, so the, the internal structure is all changed up, right, Tony? There's... Yep. Th this guy basically owns this organization. So it's a civil rights organization that I think he basically owns. Um... 
you know, and the thing that you would have to think of, which I'm not saying that I know what it is that's coming, although uh, I probably do. Um, but if you own the thing, it's like Putin. You step aside so that someone else can take over and be prime minister, right? But then you're like oh, sure. vice president or, you know, you're over here, but you're still pulling the strings on the, you know, you're still the puppet master pulling the strings of people there. So it's, what does it do? See, it's just a stupid game to, to, to make someone out there think that you don't, you know, you're just trying to placate people, but you still really have control. And I don't know if it doesn't, it doesn't stop New York state or other states from going after you, or it doesn't help IRS. those of us. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Lord, the IRS. Yeah. The IRS. The, it's not the whole NRA board that's corrupt because mm -hmm. they have seven something people. No, you have. Yeah. They've got, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have certain, one place that are always going to be there and it doesn't take much to look around and see who's been there for 20 30 years yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, and he has those people in place that always co-sign on all the stuff yeah. he does it's circles it's rings of control over there so there's people on the outside rings of, of those 70 people on the board that are maybe sitting board members but really don't have any influence and then there's there's an inside ring where and those people just basically do whatever he, that that guy says so i don't one know of, one of the best things i heard was a podcast called gangster capitalism mm -hmm. i don't know if you heard of them before gangster they did a six part series okay they did a six part series on the nra and what's actually happening mm -hmm. um and started right after when was the last the indianapolis nra um it was, that was a couple of years was, ago now right at least two three years going on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the investigation was going on then, and they've broken it down. They've got inside, inside baseball with what's happening with names. Mm -hmm. Certainly, there, there, there was people that were board members that are out there speaking loudly. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people that are behind the scenes that are saying their name, full name, telling mm -hmm. you who the heck they are and what position they held. Because a lot of this pushback that I get, even on what I do, is like, oh, Tony, you understand some of the people uh, – you know, that support what you do or NRA members. I'm like, I've been an NRA member since the mid eighties. Don't tell me that crap. I'm an NRA certified firearms instructor. I'm an NRA certified safety officer. I'm an NRA recruiter. I've given them enough money long enough to go. Yeah. You're going to take my criticism. And this is my problem. You're mm -hmm. not for real about growing a second amendment community and you've wasted lots of money and opportunity doing things yeah. that have nothing to do right. with fighting. But, but right. civil rights organization denotes that it's for the people, right or wrong? It should. That should be the main driver of everything. So the best thing that they could do is all of, like everyone, the whole entire thing, everyone steps down and they somehow give it back to the people. Yeah. Right? Not, not, not just, you know, dog and pony shows or whatever. Uh, so Tony, I wanted, I did want to ask you this cause you said you saw LaPierre was actually invited to CPAC, which is nonsense, you know? Um, <gasps> so what, and you yeah. looked at that, right? What was that all about? What was he talking about there? It was, it was 28 minutes of this dude, uh, one saying that he's a victim of, oh, uh, uh, New York city politicians. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other one is that. They don't need any new gun laws. They just need to enforce the laws that are always already on the books. And I'm like, you, you, you know you're supposed to be the president of the National Rifle Association, right? And that all gun laws are infringements, right? I right. mean, did, did nobody give him his, like, <laughs> I, I what, what's that? What's, what's Centrum? Did he not take a Centrum? I was <laughs> 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 like, yeah, brah. Um, no. And he kept, he said it like four different times mm -hmm. that the governors and the politicians should enforce the laws that are already there. And I'm like, hey, um, hey, chief, they're enforcing the laws about 501c3s in New York, and you big mad. <laughs> <laughs> they're just enforcing the laws, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was saying yeah. some stuff, and it was just typical Wayne LaPierre. I mean, it was like whatever he just does. It's tone deaf. People. It's tone deaf. But a CPAC was. I mean, I didn't. I try to look at some of the CPAC stuff. I don't know if they Edgar, were, if you did, but uh, there's a lot I of tone deafness know. going on over there. So it, it, I tried once, and mm -hmm. I got a, a migraine, and I got nauseous, and <laughs> it's it's, bas it's basically statist USA. Mm -hmm. So I, I turned that shit off quick. 
Yeah, I try to look when when uh, Trump came on, and I was like, oh God, I don't want to hear about all the stuff Biden's doing from you. You know, tell like tell me what we do moving forward. Otherwise, you got nothing for me. Correct. You know. Yeah, my so. whole issue with it again, I only saw him. Uh, mm-hmm. What I wanted to see was Maj and his group and what yeah. they. Oh did. yeah, so 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 you didn't watch because Maj did um, speak there, right or no? Am I wrong? Maj Maj panel. Trump. Maj had a panel right before Trump came up. Oh, okay. Uh, and the national news media has just been talking about all the racists there and the mm-hmm. racists this. And I'm like, you had a stage full of black people right before Trump come mm-hmm. up that you won't mention. Mm-hmm. And some are black conservative. Maj is a libertarian. Mm-hmm. But it's getting ideas out there and breaking off from the, the democratic plantation and understanding that you have to not sell yourself to a political party. You make them all earn your vote. Mm-hmm. And that's biggest problems thinking that somehow one party is different than the next right uh we're getting some complaints of buffering out there which i'm not sure where you guys are getting that from because i'm not seeing any signs of buffering over on my end um so i don't know if there's something going on with youtube but it seems like our signal here from what i can tell is strong i don't know um Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll check on it. I'll do I'll do um, I'll do a speed test here while we're going, but I'm not noticing any of that happening here. I, on... I take up a lot of screen, so maybe that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, the the rendering <laughs> the rendering is having a tough <laughs> is having a tough time trying to render. Um, I don't really blue, see it. Man. Like... It's a lot of blue. And... <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. You know, so up on Google Earth in this shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let me see what the uh, what the speed test here, because it looks like I'm I'm getting a good signal from in here. Um, I don't know. I was getting two on mine. I was getting. Yeah, I'm getting like speed. forty something here. On the, here, I'll show you guys. I'll run in what my speed test shows here. I'll capture that. Look, we're getting fifty up right now. That's insanity. Look at that. That's pure insanity. Fifty up. So I don't. I don't know what it is. I'm not saying that it's not. It's not us. But you know, um, or it's not me. But it could just be YouTube is doing something. So, right. um, I'm not super sure of what's going on with that. But I'm definitely not seeing it over here. And you guys aren't seeing anything. I'm coming in clear to you guys, right? Yep. Yes. You're good on this side. I'm yeah. good. No so. lags here. Yeah. Uh, Armin and Axis says, are you in the van down by the river, Hank? No, I'm, I'm on the Hacienda today. So um, I'm not really sure what's going on. It's probably, it, it may be a YouTube thing. Might be a bunch of people just jumping on, going live and stuff like that. So, Crashing uh, the server. Yeah. Oh, and if I, said, if I said it, I didn't. I apologize. Uh, Wayne LaPierre is the executive vice president. Yeah. Executive vice president, NRA. Yeah, not just, I mean, not just the vice president; he's the executive vice president. Uh huh. Yeah, but because we've already been playing these games, we've already been playing these games. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> Skivvy Waver says, "Hank, your gerbil's slowing down." Lots of interruptions in the video. I'm not sure where that's coming from. You know, Kiaski complaining. Okay, so I see all of those complaints, but it's not, it's not coming over on our end. Okay, so no one, no one saw Maj's panel or anything like that. Is it up anywhere where we could check it out? It's got to be up somewhere. Well, Maj, yeah, Maj had like five minutes up okay. on his Instagram mm-hmm. um, conversation mm-hmm. because I, and people kept asking in the comments, "Where can I see the rest of it? Where can I see the rest of it?" I have mm-hmm. no idea because it it, it was interesting. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm tr- I I I wish I because I saw somewhere that he said that it was controversial. I saw he made a, a social media post talking about it being controversial. I'm like, what 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 happened there? What was the controversy? I, no one knows. Any, anyone know? Yeah, I, I didn't see it, so I I, yeah. I I couldn't say what the controversy. Yeah. Was. Okay. So we'll have to reach out to Maj and uh, find that out. So. Uh, Armin and Axis says, pedal faster, Lola. No. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. That's probably on the end of, on the YouTube end. Okay. It's gotta so, be. yeah. Because uh, none of us are seeing it. These guys aren't seeing it where they're at. I'm not seeing it. But I do believe you guys out there. So, you know. Yeah, you all going to get a thing saying, hey, listen, you can participate in YouTube Premium and not have lagging. 
Right. Be <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Latino Locked and Loaded. I saw Puerto Rican Pistolero earlier. She says, "What? Well, some of my favorite two A people ever in one place." So there you go. So that would yeah, be me... that would be me, me, myself, <laughs> I, and then and then these guys probably, which is you know, which is fun. I have to say because of our conversation mm-hmm. in the comments section of their show Sunday. I had to stop and get tacos today. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're talking about hot sauce and food. All the show's going on and like <laughs> Ro is just making these great points and going on a political rant. Meanwhile we all in there, yo, you ever try Sriracha? <laughs> it's a good show, dude. I enjoy the show. And of yeah. course Yeah, they do have a good favorite. show. They're, they're some yeah. amazing human beings, and I'm glad to call them friends. She says, um, "Edgar, you look toasty." I don't know. Oh, I'm super toasty, man. I'm you got the heat on. <laughs> no, I sunburned like a motherfucker. So Saturday um, in Colorado had, in the winter. Yeah, so we were in Southern Colorado on Saturday. Um, I was co-teaching with uh, or team teaching with Gun Jesus himself, uh, Rob Pincus. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were teaching a class down in Southern Colorado, and it was windier than a motherfucker. So part of it is probably wind burn, um, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's I I put on uh, my my sunscreen about midway, and it was already too late. It was too late. Okay. Yeah. It's either that or I'm blending in with the shirt. Well, you know, you got to wear that sunscreen. You know, I mean. Especially me. Yeah. I'm probably one of the whitest Mexicans you will ever meet <laughs> in terms of tone. Lots uh, of European blood up in there. Yeah, for yeah, you're gonna real. have to do a you're gonna have to do a genetic test, man. Oh no, yeah. no. We don't I don't have to. So on my mom's side, <laughs> that's that's the Native American side. Oh your if mom? You look okay. at my mom's side, that's where all the, the dark blood is at and in the in the kinky hair and, and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on my dad's side, that shit's all Europe. That shit's all. My grandpa oh, okay. was over six feet tall, green eyes, uh, didn't speak a lick of fucking English. Mm-hmm. Uh, straight from Mexico. Uh, mm-hmm. We're straight from Mexico. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my dad's side definitely the European side, and my mom's side is the Tarumara side. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is mine. Yeah, Tarumara. I don't even. Know I don't even know what that is. That's what I was. I was like, "What? What the hell is Tony talking I, about?" I don't even I know what that English, is. I think in English it's Terra Humera, but it, it, it's a it's a tribe. It, it's a it's Terra. A tribe. Oh, so Terra Earth something. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know exactly what it is. What's you mad at me? You, but if you go to like Juarez, mm-hmm. and okay. you see the the ladies slinging their babies in, in their their Native American dress, and mm. uh, those are tarumadas. Oh, but the slinging actually... of the slinging of the babies is African. Let me let's just you know hold on a second. No, well, well, that that yeah. is a the... native thing. I don't, I don't. Yeah. I, the Africans were slinging their babies at. first. I just want to, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yeah, huh? No. They patent that. No, that's old school. <laughs> slinging, put slinging your babies is kind of old school. I know everyone has yeah. different ways. Like some people sling on the side, some people sling yeah. on the back. So you don't even know what we're talking about, do you, Tony? He's like slinging babies. I, I, <laughs> These I, people are cruel. Babies, we're talking about slinging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 picked, I picked up on the reference. I, I have yeah. no idea why we're having this discussion. Yeah. I'm it's just a way. It, this is before baby carriers. <laughs> Like, I always wondered when I came to America and I saw people with babies and they have to get these expensive, like, ba- I'm like, dude, all you need is a cloth. Yeah. That's all you need. You need a cloth. You put the baby on the back. Don't, don't drop him. That's it. That's the trick. <laughs> yeah, you can drop them a time or two. They mostly will be all right. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, you get a couple. You can. You got a couple of do-overs. <laughs> and, uh, everybody's been dropped as a baby. Let's be honest. <laughs> Hey, listen. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> My mom really thought about that when I became a Second Amendment advocate. She was like, "Maybe I dropped it one too many times." <laughs> <laughs> and of course, look, I'm I'm an old dude, man. So when our seatbelt mm-hmm. was, my mom throwing the hand across your chest in the front seat. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> gosh, yeah. She might have knocked something loose. You're but, not uh, human yeah. unless you've ever like. I remember one time I was driving in a friend's car, 
and the uh, door flew open. <laughs> there was no seatbelt. <laughs> so the door, like, somehow, you know, he made a turn, <laughs> and I went into the door, and boop, the door went open, and my friend managed to grab me <laughs> before I went out that door. <laughs> Old school, man. That's, you know, that's how you know you're alive. Huh? Uh, a hoopty. Yeah. Remember those days? Remember when the doors used to just fly open on the cars? There was no seatbelts. You know, but and the world was a happier place. Sleep in a yeah, every now and then somebody fell stuff. out of a car and died, got run over by a truck or whatever. All the little bitches died, <laughs> so that's why it was happier because uh, <laughs> only the ones with the sense of humor and and and, and the tough ones stayed alive. All yeah, it was died. yeah. <laughs> Everyone was ha- back in the days. People were happy to be alive. Seriously. Yeah. Now everyone's just <laughs> huh. What's that tell you? You went outside and played with your lawn darts and had click clacks. <laughs> your, what, was, what was that Pillsbury pastry? What was the oven thing that you could make your own pastries with, but it had like uh, a 900 watt light bulb in it? Oh, what um, was that thing? I know what you're talking about. Um, dude. Oh, crap. Yeah, someone will tell us. Something bright. No, was it? No. Um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. we had, we had tough toys you you went out and played you drank water out the hose you rode a bike without a helmet yeah uh you made if, ramps to jump stuff off of anything yeah. if everything <laughs> look in the olden days which i remember very well everything that happened to us my mother cured with freaking salt water yep with okay. gargle with salt. Gargle with salt. hey you twist your ankle yeah. soak in some water and up some yeah. salt you know, some poison? Okay, just salt and water. That's it. Salt and water. Yeah. Is it an easy break oven? Now, if you, if you accidentally, your kid accidentally ingests something they're not supposed to, you will be brought up on charges. Yeah. You know, think about it, you know? And your kid could die from a peanut butter. Yeah. Like, I mean, what? I remember I used to act up as a kid and, and like, in public, play, my mother didn't, you know, kids try to see, like, oh, we're in public. Let's see. Yeah. I can carry on here because we're in public. I can show out. We're yeah. in Walmart. She's not going to beat me in public. <laughs> my mother would be like, okay, yeah, hold, hold my ba- hold my handbag for a second. And and just, she was like, listen, I don't care. They could come take you. They could take you. They want you. They could have you. But I will, I will give you, you, yeah, I will put lashes on you. Yeah. My mama never beat us in the store. My mom was gangster enough. She beat our ass in church. You know when your mama oh, yeah, beat your ass in church, she will have no problem knocking you the hell out in a store. Yeah, uh, yeah, I never got beaten in church. Damn, man. Oh, oh, yeah. my mom was like, "Look, You're... I told y'all to stop talking. Come mm-hmm. to the back." Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to come to the back, man. My mom took us in the foyer, and all you hear is like, slap, 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 slap. <laughs> "My mom don't just got rid of me at thirteen. She's like, get the fuck out." Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Like, we good yeah, on this shit. You're out. <laughs> Vanessa out. Kitty says, my mom forgot us at a grocery store before the 60s. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, That's and Lawrence weird. Lerwick says, we had chemistry sets with real nuclear chemicals. Dude, chemistry sets we had. You can make IEDs with <laughs> It was just wrong. The world, it's, gotten, it's gotten tougher, man. It's gotten tougher. We didn't have cell phones and stuff like that. My parents, I mean, I remember like even in the 80s and stuff like that when I was growing up, coming home at like 9, 10 o'clock, I had no cell phones or nothing. No way for my parents to know. You know, I and I had beepers and stuff like that. I wouldn't give that number to my parents. Uh-uh. No yeah. way in hell. Yeah. <laughs> Long gone. My mom told us we had to move out the minute we turned 18. I left at 17 to join the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm out. Peace. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you it's your way, man. Yeah, seems yeah. like everybody's catching up now because yeah, yeah. The easy bake oven comments are starting. Oh, is to... it okay? Is that easy bake? Yeah, easy bake. Yeah, oven. easy bake oven starting to come yeah. in. So I, I wanted to plug one more thing. Sure, absolutely. Um, now that there's a little bit of, of dead air here, uh, the June nineteenth. If you guys go to our GFE National and under competitions, there is a competition. It's uh, the Makers Match. This is a competition uh, sanctioned by Guns for Everyone National, which again is, is the 501c3 that certifies farms and structures 
competitor to the NRA on the training side, but we're, we're doing a competition for those of you that make your own guns. So if you've made your P80, uh, if you've made something similar, if you've made uh, 3D printed a gun, uh, we're having a competition for you guys, uh, big name sponsors, uh, like GOA is a sponsor, uh, FPC is a okay, sponsor. Okay, so if you, go, if you go, I'm rolling in the website, if you go to the gfenational.com, where is under it? Under competition, under, under competition, if you scroll under top competition, there is a uh, maker's match. Maker's match, okay, here we go. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Did I hit it? Uh, okay, I don't think I hit it right. Here we go. Bam. Come on. Go. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, GFEN inaugural makers match. You can register and uh, in cooperation Thanks. with the AWCY, the third, the 3D firearm printing community's leading development support community. Okay. DIY yes, gun competition. Everyone is doing a DIY gun competition now, I noticed. That's, uh, that's like the hot thing to do, I guess. Is it? Yeah. So I, I can't speak for, for the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, what I will say is that this one is obviously sanctioned through through the 501c3 and many, many states. I, we're doing this in Florida. Mm -hmm. And kind of the, the one positive i think from from our competition it, in many states if you participate in a competition uh, is this you said yours is in florida yeah it's going to be in st augustine oh yeah, um augustine. is this the same one that uh pincus is up to yeah ancient city uh oh okay ancient city yeah mm -hmm. okay okay mm -hmm. so yeah he's he's um he's going to be participating in it as, as a competitor um so he's been helping us out promote and stuff like that so mm -hmm. but this is a, a a work between gfen um and are we cool yet uh the are we cool yet uh people are they're the ones that are basically going to make sure your guns are safe i'm not a competitive shooter mm -hmm. um i'm also not a 3d printer my son gets into that stuff so that's why it made sense to to link up with people who actually know what the hell they're talking about mm -hmm. um so obviously we have the um, their support and they're going to make sure that the guns are actually safe and operable and, and we're mm -hmm. not just fucking creating shrapnel all over the place, mm -hmm. which would be fun as well. Mm -hmm. um, just not super, super safe. So, yeah, we're going to be having that for, for all you guys um, that are interested in that stuff. Just go to the gfenational.com, uh, register for, for that. We'd like to see more ladies register. We've got a few coming out uh, already, but we, we'd love to see more more ladies come out yeah. Uh, so some dudes just uh, identify as women and then register. And... Uh, no, we we no, haven't gotten to that point. No yet, one's going to endorse that. I'm I, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we guess. haven't ran into that yet, so we'll address it when it comes up, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be so is Latina locked and loaded uh, building a gun for this, or what? What's I, going I, on? I, I hope so. Okay. I'd love to, to have uh, the, the Puerto Ricans and, oh, uh, Latina locked and loaded out there. The mm -hmm. Latinos locked and loaded. That'd be awesome to have them out there. Spectators are welcome. So even if you don't compete uh, and you want to kind of check it out, mm -hmm. um, more than welcome to, mm -hmm. to, to show up. Yeah. Yeah. She's asking about that. Can you attend the spectator? And DCG44 says June 19th is Juneteenth. Yeah, I'm going to uh, promote this because in Jersey, it's illegal for us to have home-built firearms. But I know friends that had made theirs out of state and uh, would like to compete in something like this. I want to promote it because, yeah, dude, you, people need to get out there with their home bills. Um, this is legit. I mean, it's been legal in most states since the founding of the country. Mm -hmm. Now they're trying to push it as if it's something new. Yeah, and nationwide, I mean, on the federal level, it's been illegal for you to make your own gun for a very long time. So, mm -hmm. what what we want to do is is bring it out there, let it be known that that it is legal. Because um, you get to the point where there we saturate the the market with this stuff, um, even just with the knowledge of this stuff, and it gets 
a little bit more difficult for for the politicians to say that this is an underground thing and it's all for the black market and that's why nobody talks about it and mm-hmm. and that's kind of the fear right where where if, if people are hush hush with the 80 percenters then it's very easy for them to be like see it's the, it's the people that that don't want to say who they are and it's the mass people and it's the the underground people that are into the 80 percenters and, and you kind of give them that ammunition but if you say like no look tony simon is on the, and on this shit and hank strange and Mm-hmm. And, and Latina Locked and Loaded is in on this shit, and, and all these people who, who are very um, out there, I guess, are, are part of this stuff. And it makes, them a lot, it makes it a lot more difficult for these people to say that it's an underground thing and only for criminals and um, mm-hmm. black market type yeah, Everyone stuff. has the right to make their own, their own firearms. So. Their own anything. Yeah, to yeah. make anything, yeah, yeah. Denying someone the right to make something is insanity. I mean, that's like, you know, that's a primal right right there, right along right. The, with the right of defense. So, so I, um, I don't know if that's the one you were talking about. It was the one that Pincus is promoting? He's really helping. I know, us Pink, out with yeah, the, I know Pincus. I did see Pink. I, I'm assuming it's the same one, unless yeah, no, he he's in on okay. he's in on this. Uh, he's been okay. helping us promote it a lot. He's not part of GFEN. He's not part of Are We Cool Yet? He's just a 3D printer guy. And if you've ever worked with Pink, because you know how he operates, he gets excited about one thing and he's just like yeah. fucking He just started 3D shit. printing shit two weeks ago. And he's he's already... And now like, he's an like, impresario yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and on our end, he's, he's control plus help. pew now. <laughs> and in, in, our, in our end, he's been a huge help as far mm-hmm. as making connections with with a that's lot good. of these people, mm-hmm. um, so so that's been uh, he's helping out in in that regards. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a a, collab- a collaboration between GFEN and yeah uh, the Are We yeah. Cool Yet. Everyone uh, should get a three D printer. I'm gonna get one once I get like a, a, a lot of those crazy stuff going on here. Everyone should get a three D printer and start three D printing stuff, as well as guns. Not you know just not just guns. You don't have to just do guns, but. 3D printers are good for pre- 3D printing a lot of stuff, man, for printing things. So yeah, absolutely. And it, I mean, there, there's there's places out there. You mentioned one of them, Control Control uh, Pew, Control Pew, uh, mm-hmm. the Are We Cool Yet community. Mm-hmm. We have links to the Are We Cool Yet community on on mm-hmm. our websites. And Are We Cool Yet is basically, if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of just a, a place where people drop files and oh, okay. and support each other. And mm-hmm. if you oh, what happened there? Uh-oh. Dropped. Okay, yeah. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, there was... You guys paused for a second, so... I think we're all here, right? Everyone's here. Yeah. That was weird. I'm here. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird how that came through. Let us know how that came through just now on you guys' end, because all of a sudden everything... There must be stuff going on here with... Uh, I think there's probably stuff going on with the YouTube servers dedicated to going live, so... Um, and Rain gave us uh, two bucks there. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think there's stuff going on. Everyone and their mama is going live nowadays, man. Yeah, and their mama's mama. So I their appreciate mama's mama. That's burning up the... That's the one thing. It's tough. Like, if we do our own platform, it's tough to have, you know, to be able to go live outside of uh, YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that just because of the amount of server space that's been... Uh, well, see, here, here's the thing is this is what we have to get together. So we're starting, we started our own social media mm-hmm. platform and we're, mm-hmm. we're kind of still in, in beta test part two. So anybody who okay. wants to go to gunsforeveryone.com and just go to um, it, it register for that shit, it's pretty slow right now. It's it's not huge, but it is, it is tough. And, and I'll tell you what else is tough about creating our own platform. We just don't support each other. Mm-hmm. There's there's like a handful of people that I, I can mention that know about this or, or social media platform that are like fuck yeah let me jump on that yeah, shit. Yeah, I didn't know you have. So where is this social media platform? What's it? Do you guys have an app or is it just a, not an app yet? We don't want to invest on an app yet. But if you go to gunsforeveryone.com, dot mm-hmm. um, and if you go to the tab, um, the menu tab, and it'll say gun social. Um, there, there's a couple bugs that we're still working out. It's not entirely perfect right now, but it helps us okay. out, right? Like if everybody's on there and, and communicating and talking and say, Hey dude, this is fucked up. 
mm-hmm. this doesn't work, this works, this doesn't work, and shit like that. Like, it, it helps us, and it helps us grow. Yeah, let me see. I'll try to run it in here. So go to gunsforeveryone.com, and then go into the tab and go to Gun Social. Gun Social, and it should have, like, a login link. And then you can create your own uh, account from there. And you can even use your Facebook account or you can use your Gmail and, and kind of log in that way as well. So yeah, there are social right. logins. Um, I don't know if it's but, working on the mobile yet. I don't see it actually going there. Okay, well, oh, oh hold on. There's a, there's a thing you can press more directly into it. Let me see if that works. Correct. Okay, I'll, I'll, okay, here we go. Yes, it did work because I recognize this logo. But boom. Yeah. And you know, no. and, and that's how that's how we get better, right? Is if, if the community is using it and, and sending us emails. Oh, hey, so you can register awesome. and get a password and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then you get in, and, and it kind of works just like any other social media mm-hmm. network. Okay. But that's kind of what I've seen. It is mm-hmm. that that's kind of what happened to um, what was the the gun YouTube uh, that kind of went away. There was uh, well, there's Gun Streamer that's still technically out there, but they changed ownership, and I'm not sure yeah. what's going on with the new ownership. And a lot of that and is then this full thirty. Support. Yeah, a lot of it is just just lack of of involvement, a lot of lack of support, because everybody's so used to the platforms that they complain about. Because mm-hmm. uh, we'll sit there on Instagram, oh fuck Instagram, fuck Facebook. We're like, hey, mm-hmm. I created something for us, and like, no, I don't, I don't like the way mm-hmm. that one works. I mm-hmm. like Facebook, I like Instagram. Mm-hmm. So. Because the server stuff is easy, right? Like server stuff just takes money. They, we let, let's be honest. Between Colian Orr and, and Tony Simon, we've got plenty of money uh, really? to create. <laughs> <laughs> we got more. I I money. think I think that Noir might argue that with you, but I know for sure. <laughs> Even though he's right here, can speak for himself. <laughs> Tony will definitely argue that one with you. But collectively, we, we, we all have enough money to create the server space to do it. Servers mm-hmm. are, are relatively expensive, but they're not out of the reach for mm-hmm. normal human beings. Mm-hmm. You can get a decent, to start off with, a decent server for about 10 grand. Um, you, you can throw it in a nice, everybody in here has access to a, a, a closet that, that's well ventilated and, and shit like, like We can figure this stuff out, right, mm-hmm. between all of us. Yeah, but there's also it, blockchain. I think the best way to do, uh, if you're going to do social media platform, if you could put it on blockchain, it would be good. Yeah. You I know? mean, there's so many ways to do it, but it, yeah. it just, it doesn't garner the support. It's kind of like like Mexicans in, 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 in black TV, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what I've seen a lot, like Arsenio Hall has a really good talk show, but it, there's not enough support for the Arsenio Hall to be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, George Lopez had a relatively decent talk show. But there just wasn't enough support for us. We complain about, fuck, there's nothing but white people doing talk shows. And then we get Arsenio, we get George Lopez, and then we just don't support them. Um, it, it's kind of that same thing with, with the social medias and alternatives. Mm-hmm. Is It's not just, I wish there was one out there. No, there's out there, but we just don't support it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. You know, we have to keep working on these things, man, and trying to get better. Everything starts somewhere, you know. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. So... Uh, I would encourage people to check this out. Um, do you have like a separate development team for this, or are you just developing this yourself? What's a little on? bit my, myself, but I, we do have support from people who who actually do this for a living. But a lot of that depends on people who use it. So people who use it are the ones that tell us where the bugs are at, because um it's it just like anything else you know uh, iphone pull it throws out a, a new version of their S, uh, os and and a lot of them they created it they don't they don't use it on a daily basis mm-hmm. uh, so they don't see all the bugs that, that are happening the only way we figure out where all the bugs are at mm-hmm. is if people kind of play with it and, and 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 tell us where where all the bugs are at and then we can address um those bugs so yeah. yeah, a little bit is myself, and then uh, we do have uh, software developers that we kind of consult with so that they can do it. And eventually, if this is successful, then it, it it's it's worth it to us to throw money into it and 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 do the app and mm-hmm. um, go that route as well. So yeah, but, Tony, but, what do you think? You're going to put some uh, some of your billions up on this? Billions. Yeah, uh, I up, I upgraded him to billions. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, have I mean, your people call my people 
Yeah. They talk amongst themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't call us, though. We call you. We call you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get voicemail when you call his people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, talking about calling, um, we're doing this thing out in Omaha. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine called me from NRA ILA, and he was like, hey, I got a, I got a guy out who's in charge of NRA ILA out in Omaha. You mind if he calls you so we can work together promoting your parents? <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem, man. Give him a call. So that four days ago, man, you know, mm-hmm. in my life, four days is like a really long time ago because mm-hmm. I, I'm doing stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Phone rings the day while I'm at work. Says Virginia. Hello? Hi. Tony, I'm from the NRA ILA, and I was one man. I was like, click. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> like, Your friend called me, told me to call you. <laughs> oh. I was like, you were literally this far away from being hung up on. Mm, because mm. usually those those NRA, what do you call those people? Uh, fundraisers. Hi, if an NRA. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wayne wants me to call you to talk about how we have to work together. And I'm like, you know what? We're on the same page. We really do have to work together. Mm-hmm. And I think grassroots is the way to do it. And I think Rain will agree with me. So if you could donate to diversityshoot.com and help me with my Second Amendment advocacy here in Jersey. Hello? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, oh no, we can work together. Send me some money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, what's up? Yeah, well, NRA has done nothing for uh, us, but NRA ILA has actually promoted our events, mm-hmm. um, has come to our events, has spoken at our events, especially in a state like Jersey when they know they're just going to get a ration of crap. Like, what do you do here? You guys suck. And it's like, no, I've been with them when they testified. I've been there. Um, I, I've got some behind the scenes what's going on in the state where everything is blue, where where Republicans are the minority and not even really Republicans. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. at least according to the national uh, um, stand. So I'm like, bro, look, you have to find out a Second Amendment group that you can believe in that actually putting in work. Yeah. Um, and if it's not the NRA, then go with someone else. But pay attention to what they do and the work they put on. Mm-hmm. And your state organizations really should be some of the ones you should look at first. What's happening in your state? Because you can see that money. You can go to those meetings. And if dude pulls up in a $20,000 suit, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we good? Mm-hmm. So, so my whole thing is, dude. If you want to be a part of advocacy, there are lots of ways to do it. Edgar has a few of them, which I'm obviously going to join probably by tomorrow because mm-hmm. I have to show another show coming up in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. But like, like I'm going to support them. Uh, one way to support people is to actually post up their podcast on your social media. It's post up their links on your social media. You need to get their word. In your circle of friends, a lot of people act like somehow they need to march on the Capitol to make a difference. No, you can participate every day from the toilet while you're watching your freaking... <laughs> true indeed. <laughs> while you're from the throne, your... from the throne. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can help out and spread word. You can mm-hmm. donate a little bit. You don't have to be a Patreon that donates a hundred dollars a month. You could be somebody that kicks in a buck every three months. Whatever you can do, you can help. And if money's tight, hey, volunteer with your local organization. Mm-hmm. They might need help in doing nothing but passing out pamphlets at an event. There's ways you can do it. Everybody doesn't have to march on their capital. Everyone doesn't have to speak in front of the politicians. You can you can be out there helping. And how's this? Jersey, a lot of closet of gun owners. They don't want anyone to know. Then funds, dude. Mm-hmm. Kick some money that way. Mm-hmm. There's things you can do to help. I mean, I've had guys come up to me on a range and just go, look, Tom, I always mean to give you money here. Thank mm-hmm. you for doing what you do. And that's that's real humbling. I mean, that is really, really humbling when somebody believes in you that much. Mm-hmm. And, and also a little scary because I'm like, I don't need nobody looking at this white dude. be slipping me a 20. In. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and then you guys uh, go off to the bathroom or something. Hey, one, 20, you know. 20. 20 all right 20 dollars is 20 dollars i don't need you <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Listen, there are every everyone can do something here. It, it's it doesn't even have to be money, right? You can just help by sharing stuff, or you know, th there's lots of things that everyone could do if you really think about it. That you could do things um, on a grassroots level, on your home, at home, locally. There's lots of things that that you could do that everyone can do to uh, be part of this. It's tough though, right? Because there's so many different things, so many. There's so many people involved here. Everyone's doing something, and, and we all... This is the one thing that we have equity on. I think there's several things, but this is one that's very big. We all have the same time. If if we're all in the same... If we're all alive in the same 24-hour period on this planet, we have the same time. Some of us are sleeping, some of us are working, and some of us are doing different things, right? That we, we make choices and we do what we want to with our time. You know, we don't all live in the same space of time. People don't come into the world or go out of the world. But in every 24 hours, we all got 24 hours. Yeah, so. and that that's kind of the excuse, right, for, for a lot of people. It's just like, ah, I work six hours or I work mm -hmm. seven hours. Or I, like it, it, everybody does. Like everybody does in, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the most powerful, I, f I forget which athlete it was, Mm -hmm. but somebody had mentioned, I'm going to be just, just as great as you. Mm -hmm. And the response was, well, then you have to be prepared to give up your entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause you, you have to sacrifice everything to, to do exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we see this in training a lot. Uh, uh, Isaac just posted up a rant on mm -hmm. our Facebook page and you can mm -hmm. go read it right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Guns for everyone. And it's basically in short, why the fuck are gun owners so lazy? Mm -hmm. Uh, why are they so lazy? And a lot of the comments are like, well, it, it's it just, uh, I, I work. Like, so what? So, like, Isaac, Isaac works a full-time job, and then he's still training and, and teaching and taking classes. Like, it, to your point, like, everybody's doing this stuff. It, it just, uh, we're kind of our, our individually our own worst enemies, and we know this. This is nothing new. I'm not saying anything new. We, we don't all, we have the same time, but we all have different things, I think, that we need to do in that time. So for sure, if, if um, you know, so let's say someone in the, and I'm not trying to knock Isaac or yeah. whatever and what he's saying, but if you're in the gun world and you're training and you got all the cool guns, that's what you focus on. Here's the question. Do you take care of your health? Do you take care of your family? Yeah, you yeah know, no, no, that um, was just the general, uh, yeah, general thing. Cause, yeah, because yeah, because something absolutely. suffers in everything, when, yeah. you know, when we're ultimately doing things. But yeah, there, you know, there there has to be priorities if we really care about it. And it does seem to me like when it comes to the gun world, the last couple of years, people have kind of been like sleepwalking through this thing. Yeah, yeah, right. And and that's that's the point. So th that's kind of the point. It's it just we, we make too many excuses on. Mm -hmm helping each other out because uh, time or, or, or whatever, like it just, there, there's, we can sit here and make an excuse after excuse after excuse. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, you just figured out that you spent the same amount of time making excuses as you could have doing working something. something out. Yeah. And or just, or just posting something up or, you know, yeah, whatever. Ahead. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Tony. Well, the frustrating part is this, and, and we try to explain it priorities priorities if it's not your priority to do this just say it um when i try to explain that maybe the person that votes for biden but is a gun owner how can they do that because gun ownership isn't a priority mm -hmm. compared to what other things they care about mm -hmm. the same way that you won't get um, to come into an event that's held on a saturday because that's the only day you have off because Sunday's a day for doing this and you're working all week. I'm like, it's all about priorities and prioritizing what you care about and what's important to you. And if you understand it on your behalf, then you should be able to understand it on somebody mm -hmm. who doesn't vote that way or who doesn't. And I'm like, bro, we have to be more uh, empathetic. I think that's the word uh, to each other and each other's needs. But, uh, yeah, gun people will get on your nerves because they will tell you about what days you need to host an event. You need to have it on the week. You need to have it on the weekend. You need to have it when it's sunny. You need to have it when it's cooler because it's too hot. I'm like, bro, how's this? You have it on this day to show up or stay home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. what it just – don't don't be hitting me up talking about I wish I could have been there. Either be there or don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's look, I get it. It's a it's a tough thing. And there's a lot of things. And I think one of the things if you look at so when you look at the stuff that talks about actually doing things. So I was looking at, um, 
you know, how do you organize your mind, how you organize your life and do stuff. And uh, there was this guy that said, look, if you look at all the things you have to do, you're not going to do anything. Okay, what you have to do is set priorities and go down that priority list. So if you've got 100 things to do and you think about 100 things to do, you'll do nothing. But if you go, well, there's 10 things that are really important, and I'm going to start at this number one thing that's the most important, boom, done, knock it out. Okay, go on to number two, go on to number three. You know, if you run out of time in the day and you fall asleep, okay, you wake up, you get the 10 things are done, now go now go down to the to the next 10 things, you know? I don't know, I think that's probably, which, which one of us is uh, dinging right there? Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting inbound text messages. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tony was oh, like, what's I'm, happening? <laughs> I'm like, what's yeah. going on? Man? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the... I on my phone off. Yeah, um, what I was trying to say about that, I think that's the way that we all have to deal with it, right? Obviously, we're all busy. People are working. People have uh, responsibilities and all kinds of stuff going on. If it is important, then set some kind of time aside where you're like, okay, on this one day a week, for this hour, I'm going to do something about for the Second Amendment, if that's, you know, if that's what it is. If you're someone who's watching this and you're watching us and, and you're enjoying this or whatever, I know there's people that watch and they reload stuff or they do things, you know, they're doing their bills, getting the taxes ready or whatever it is, you know, you, if squeeze in some time and do it there. But that's the way to, if you think about all the things you have to do, you'll drive yourself crazy. Take care of your priorities and what's important to you. However, realize, like, so so the Second Amendment is very important to us, right? We live in that world, and I think the people here in the chat live in that world. But at some point, people are going to come around to realizing how it's important. Maybe too late. If you look at this 8 million plus people that, that bought new guns or bought guns for the first time, you know, imagine with the stuff that these guys want to put forward, that's 8 million disappointed people who would not have been able to do anything. Mm. And they're going, what the hell's going on? Like, the white man is stopping me from buying guns. <laughs> no, this is this has been going on for a long time. And, it, you know, you it wasn't a priority, so you didn't do anything about it. And now you're here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that was part of the frustration being in advocacy. Mm-hmm. Trump won, and everybody, like, took their foot off the gas pedal. I'm like, bro, no, this is when you need to stop that gas pump. Correct. Mm-hmm. We, we had both houses. Or you had the House, the Senate, the presidency. Bro, look, I'm just that corny dude that wants to roll back freaking, you know, the, I want to go back 1933 with it. You know, I'm like, let's, let's roll this all the way back that I can order a belt fed from Sears and Roebuck and have it delivered to my front door. Mm-hmm. By the way, I would be much skinnier because i wouldn't buy food if i could order a belt <laughs> <laughs> well hey that gets my vote you know <laughs> you'll be healthy and you'll be happy at last thursday's event uh, because it's in pennsylvania uh they came up to me and go hey one of these hey need anything i was like no nah, man we got the food everybody's down everybody's happy everybody's on the no you need anything you got an mp5 you got an mp5 Five. <laughs> got the MP5. I was like, wait a minute, who's feeding it, me or you? And the range was like, we, we, we're going to take care of it. Nice. So they brought out the MP5, and all of a sudden, um, I, I let all the new shooters and everybody shoot, and then I just started lining them up on the MP5 and had the range uh, safety officer slash instructor mm-hmm. give them in- individual instructions on how to run the MP5. And all of a sudden, you saw new shooters – who started on a 22 in that port mm-hmm. <laughs> over here doing Rocket. three full auto bursts at the end. Yeah, MP5 like, is beautiful. Is awesome. yeah. And I'm like, this is what it's all about. Man. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. and, and it was great. And I've mm-hmm. never fired an MP5. Um, a, you know, belt fit, 96 Marine Corps, M60 gunner. Yeah, I got that. But uh, never did that. I never got it. Never even knew why people liked the MP5s. Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. so it was, it was great man it was great and and i'm like bro we get people to break down these walls 
we get him to kick down the walls of the categories that we try to lock him in. As a Mexican, I've been saying that for a long time, break down the walls. <laughs> <laughs> or or dig or dig tunnels underneath them. I mean, tunnels, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you gotta <laughs> do. Get out of these boxes, bro, because that's how they control us. They want you in a box so they can dismiss you. If mm-hmm. you're black, if you're Latino, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to vote. I'm voting for my rights, bro. And I've said this because I finally did the math on it. The oldest black man in this country born with the same rights as a white person was born after April of 1968 with the housing bill, equal rights bill. That means he's only 52 years old. It's crazy. That's how old the most equal black dude is to a white dude. These rights aren't that old that we've had. I am not giving them away and letting them be taken because you've tricked people into believing that some rights are dangerous and need to be restricted. I will fight this until the bacon stops my effing heart. That's my goal, is to fight this and grow the community and wake people up to the lies we've been told. Mm -hmm. You have the human right of self-defense and no party should own that. It should be toxic politically to any party that wants to limit the human right of self-defense. And we have to get out of this freaking rut we're in as gun owners and go, yeah, we can do something about it. We can push this if we make it apolitical. That was Mm -hmm. one of the problems about having LaPierre at CPAC. And the NRA has stepped into the political arena talking about things that have nothing to do with the human right of self-defense. And that's where they dropped the ball. That's why I have liberals. That's why I have anybody along the political spectrum, straight, gay, whatever, come to my event, exercise your right and learn how to fight for it and learn that you've been lied to by mainstream media. That's the problem. You buy into the bullshit. Yeah, freedom is dangerous. I mean, it's dangerous, right? That's what they're afraid of it. Yeah, that's what I, I, I worry when my kids, you know, my kids learning how to drive and then having cars and then being out there mm-hmm. where I'm not in the car with them, I worry about it. But, you know, they have to be human beings and they have to live their life. So they, they have, have to, to do to dangerous be. things. And, and this is just a reality, right? So for sure, it's dangerous, but you can't tell me that this police officer, this Secret Service agent, this guy in the military can do this stuff or these people are okay to have a bunch of guns around them but these people aren't okay to have a bunch of guns around them no i mean you know especially when we see historically what happens when the humans are disarmed when you have no way to fight back i did not know this they just kidnapped another 300 women in what africa in nigeria i think in nigeria the boko haram i i saw i think yesterday that they released um they released some people but why do we even have like, why do we even have that situation? Just, just give the, you know, all the places that that um are worried about the uh being kidnapped by the Boko Haram. Just give them some guns, man. Some AKs will solve that problem. Oh, that'll slow that way down when you can get shot yeah. in the face with an old school AK. Yeah, I mean, you know, but the problem with Nigeria is is what we're talking about here. That it's not so easy for people to get guns and at times i think in recent history in nigeria for example we've seen the police turn the guns on the crowds <laughs> you know so that was crazy yeah so um yeah it's you know it's it's crazy out there it's crazy out there uh, listen there's there's so many things everyone's trying things i understand where edgar's coming from with that you know we're all trying things and we need it, as tough as it is, you know, we need people to try to support it. I, it's one of the things. Just like the, the Tusk guy sponsoring this. Have you, do you, you guys heard of Tusk? I have not. Yeah. What about you, Tony? No, I'm sorry. So let's start. Th- so let me. So let me explain that. I mean, basically, they sponsor the podcast. So I'm just telling you guys that. But Tusk is a cryptocurrency, and it's oh. designed t- to be used in the retail space for the firearms industry. So, you know, it's basically crypto for the firearms industry. It's, it's not just for the firearms industry. I think it could be used in lots of different industries. One of the things with Bitcoin, which would be the, the cryptocurrency you've heard of, is that everyone's holding on to it right now, right? I think Bitcoin is what, somewhere like $51,000 a coin? $51,000, yeah. Yeah, so it's an investment thing and everyone's holding on to it. Tusk is designed for people to use this to buy and sell things to each other. And one of the ways that they've tried in the past and they will try again, and it's still current, like they said that they stopped Operation Choke Point, right? 
that was where basically banks were out there under the guise of going after the bad guys, making it very difficult for the people in the firearms industry, which is protected by the Second Amendment, to do business. Um, you know, and they said that they stopped that in regards to the firearms industry, but they didn't really. I've been banned for life by PayPal, for example, right? Um, and there's lots of other examples, lots of people, uh, the other day we had Kevin Dixie on, he says he's been banned for life, lots of people been banned for life by PayPal. Never heard of her. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you and KD sort that one out, I'm not, I'm not getting in the middle of that, um, but the thing is, is that I don't want to be in the middle of it, honestly, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is that so so Tusk is designed as a cryptocurrency that's out there. This is what they support the channel with. Um, and as a matter of fact, today um, I got Babyface since he's on the on the show all the time. I told Babyface and Walter if they sign up, they if they figure out how to do it. Uh, I'm gonna break them off some of that Tusk money. I did that today with Babyface P. So the next time he's on, you guys can ask him about it. But this this is a thing that's going to be very important to us here very shortly, if not right now. But it's tough to get the word out there. And that's the reason, one of the reasons why they approached me, you know, why they decided to sponsor the show, why they come on the show and we talk about this stuff and I put up snippets. Uh, they also sponsor John Crump. Both of you guys know Crump, I believe. Yeah. Um, and this is stuff we need to look into, but it's tough, right? It's tough. That learning curve. I, I never got into to Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, if I had a crystal ball and I knew Bitcoin was going to go from fractions of a penny to being worth $51,000, I would have done nothing except, uh, you know, ex ex Bitcoin. Ex yeah, except Bitcoin. buy Bitcoin. But we didn't know that. But for us... In the, in the gun world, in the Second Amendment community that we believe in freedom, this is a thing that we've got to figure out how to wrap our heads around it. And I'm, and I'm talking me included because they are going to choke us off at the banks. I, I'll give you guys an example. Um, Sam Andrews that makes the leather holsters that I do a lot of stuff with on the main channel. Um, his bank one day realized that he makes leather holsters and they're like, what if this guy brings in illegal leathers or something, which is not even what he, he makes leather holsters, <laughs> right? He doesn't go out there and hunt down animals and skin their hide and stopping lions in the cell yeah, and getting, but they, but they, but they, someone at the bank decided, Hey, we don't know what this guy, if he's bringing in illegal leathers, they froze his account. They never told him froze his account. And when he found out, he had to go get lawyers and all this kind of stuff to get his money back. He basically had to go create another account to keep the business going and then get, go, go into this whole thing to get his money back. And then he stopped dealing with that bank. But where does a bank... I mean, that's if they want to go question someone, they should go to the, the leather suppliers. Not the guy who's buying it legally from leather, leather suppliers and doing his thing. But this is how crazy... It's getting in our world, and there's going to be more of that. And by the time we get smacked upside the head with it, it's going to be kind of late, right, to start trying to figure it out. Because now you're already in a situation where they've cut us off from being able to buy and sell things to each other. And not just guns, parts, accessories, etc. Go ahead. And I think that's the, the, the danger of, of the, this mentality of, like, if, you, if you're a Democrat, I'm not going to talk to you because mm -hmm. then, then you, you lose that opportunity of educating these people. Mm -hmm. of The bootmaker is probably, and, and I'm not suggesting that all bootmakers do this, but, I mean, if we look at history, if you look at documentaries and stuff like that, uh, the, the bootmaker and the boot leather shit community is probably more likely to do that stuff than the mm -hmm. holster maker. Mm -hmm. um, so... But if you put up this wall, like, oh, there are a bunch of Democrats, like, we, we lose that opportunity to educate these individuals. Because it was probably just one individual. It probably wasn't the bank overall. It wasn't the vice president of the bank. It was just some some low-level manager at a bank mm -hmm. that said, I'm going to put a red flag on this this account really mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's it's that lot, lack of education. And I think a, a lot of the, the gun community, what they do is they shoot themselves in the foot, no, no pun intended there, in, in saying, well, I'm not going to talk to those people because uh, those people are evil and they don't think exactly 100% the way that I think or they voted a certain way. And, and we, I get it. You know, vote, uh, votes have consequences and elections have consequences, stuff like that. But uh, that doesn't mean we can't continue to educate the people that need to be educated on this stuff. Uh, I, 
Uh, me personally, I'd much rather spend time with, with with people that are ignorant to what we do um, and enlighten them in what we really do than spend uh, a day in the echo chamber. Because a day in the echo chamber doesn't, I mean, we're, we're not really accomplishing a, a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit, but but not not a shit ton. Um, here we are in the echo chamber to to a degree, but in hopes that these people kind of understand um, how we move forward on this stuff. Like we we have to admit that uh, it it changed the world, changed society, changed. I mean, uh, in the span of a year, you went from Democrats kind of di tipping their toes with with gun ownership uh, a little bit more than they had in the past to all of a sudden. Fuck it, they they just plunged in like they mm -hmm. like they're just in it like they they're just in it properly um, motivated it, I think super mo yeah absolutely yeah and I so, have to say, I want to I want to jump in before you get further away from me to talk to people yeah they're in power the Democrats are in power now why would you cut off the conversation with someone who's Correct. already spoken down yeah. the wall and purchased the firearm. Yeah. That's the Democrat you want to talk to and get them politically active to talk to their own representatives. Mm -hmm. I think so. The the thing I would separate it from, if you know, if if you could do this in your brain, I don't look as at regular people I meet on the sh like when I see if I go out now and I'm at the mall or whatever, right? And I see a person, I don't go Democrat, uh, Republican, right. you know. This yeah. guy's an atheist right here. This guy, I don't see it that way. I see human beings. I think about that when I see politicians and when I see talking heads. But when I when I see my fellow human beings, I don't think that way. So I definitely don't look at people out there. And I think ultimately, yes, you're right. The folks out there, people out there, faced with all of what happened last year in America, right? Yeah said yeah i'm gonna take my my safety my security into my own hands that of my family and my things i'm gonna take it into my own hands if the if the world's gonna get crazy if the world may never go back to normal which we're here a year later we freaking haven't gone back to, no to normal we're a year and some months later you know yeah. it looks like yep. we're not ever gonna go back to normal because i think tony said this earlier these guys don't want to let go of the power <laughs> you know so yeah. I gotta bounce. My show's about to start. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right, man. To see yeah. you, Edgar, man. Miss, miss seeing yeah. your sexual events, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm uh, yeah. the antisocial one, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but man, I had fun at Shot Show. Um, <laughs> see, man. Hank, uh, listen, you and Lola appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks for uh, coming on, man. We always. Firearms. Huh? <laughs> gotta get over to the Firearms Radio Network. Oh, put on do it. Awesome show. Ba Boom. <laughs> Have a good time, man. Yeah. Have a good time. Yep. Yeah. Um, Tony Simon, two A for Simon. everyone, every everyone. The the legend, the the man, the myth, the mountain. As I said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Lola says thank you, Tony. By the way, Lola chiming in out there. So yeah, man. I um I don't even where was I there. We got a couple uh, of minutes here. What did you before before we close up the show and stuff like that? What did you? I know I know you were talking about a couple of things you wanted to get out to the people, but what do you want to make sure you you let the people know about? Or what do you want to get out? Do you have something you want to talk about, man? Something get off your chest? No, I, we we I plug the two things that I wanted to plug is that's Guns for Everyone National. Um, again, that that is the mm -hmm. alternative to the NRA for for mm -hmm. training. We're certifying instructors nationwide. We already have instructors nationwide that are certified through us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and given the the 501c3 status in, in many states, not all of them, um, but in many states, that's kind of a requirement uh, for instructors to be able to teach concealed carry classes and be certified through a national nonprofit organization. So uh, really, we need to uh, get the word out on that. So, um, And then the, the competition. That competition is that, that other thing that that I wanted to talk about um, just because um, it, it's important for, for the community, I think, so that, that DIY stuff mm -hmm. doesn't get looked at as, as a negative and it gets looked at as more of a, uh, when people think, quote unquote, ghost, ghost gunning guns, we, we mm -hmm. just want it to be looked at like, yeah, everybody's got a homemade mm -hmm. gun, like, well, what's the problem? 
Yeah, uh, I should get you, or I don't know. When I say me, I should, you know, I really mean Lola. We should figure out a way <laughs> to get you on at the same time with Control Pew the next time we get him on. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be uh, a good conversation there and then those guys i don't know if you know the people behind uh what is it are we cool yet you said are we cool yet? yeah yeah maybe we can because I'm, I'm trying to like just get everyone to link up talk to each other one of the problems is that we all don't necessarily know each other right yeah. in some case if you if we know people and then there's issues like, okay i get it you know um not everyone yeah, but gets at, along at some but... point you have to kind of get past those issues right mm -hmm. yeah so, because there's a lot of people that, quote unquote, I have issues with, mm -hmm. and, and the the best way, I mean, there there's certain people that I'm probably never going to squash that that beef with, but mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of a lot of times where it's just been a simple conversation, just like oh, it's just a misunderstanding, like, mm -hmm. let's just move past it, because the priority is moving this movement. So the priority is um, increasing liberty, and and I get it. There's there's beefs that the will never go away but if there is beef i mean what, what better way than mm -hmm. be on a podcast and figure that shit out yeah absolutely so let me get this in as the last question here from uh kiaski because he asked this a couple times so we'll we'll try to get it in he says um hank what banks are pro 2a um and that's something i don't know the answer to edgar i'm gonna let you take a shot at that <laughs> you, you know i i don't know if if there's so the banks that I have are, are I, I think they're local banks. I don't think the first bank is, is one that I have, and then I have a credit union. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that they're necessarily pro 2A as much as they're not anti 2A. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is a difference there. Yeah. Uh, but I've never seen any bank. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so far as like coming out and see, now I'm going to assume, so there's lots of, this is the big national banks, right? And then you have your local banks, and some local banks have gotten bigger. Um, like I know Lola and I, we deal with a, a local bank here that's been growing and stuff like that. And I, and I would assume that um, from conversations with at least the people who work there and stuff like that, that these are conservatives, people who believe in the Constitution, Second yeah. Amendment. But I don't know. I can't tell you a bank that puts that out there. Correct. And they may have good reason that they do that. I think that there's, um, there are there are some places from what I hear that are okay with people doing gun business and stuff like that with it going through there. That they are, you know, Second Amendment people, people who believe in guns. I don't know if that's really like a very public thing. I don't know if it has to be. You know, maybe we need to figure this out behind the scenes. And like have conversations with these people, and then we all know the ones that are, but we don't make it into a big thing where people can focus on them and then try to go after them. And the reason why I say that there's regulatory stuff involved here, right? Correct. So maybe if a bank stood up and said, "Oh, this is what who we are," and then you have people in the government could go, "Well, we want to see this." You know, they had the IRS all up, you know, giving them anal swabs. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because that is every the other fear, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the the new fear is that governments are, are coming in and requesting information about mm -hmm. gun owners mm -hmm. and gun purchases so yeah i see that mm -hmm. yeah but it's 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 a good question you know yeah um yeah he says thank you trying to see who will work with loans for ffls etc um i would so if i had to give you advice and like i said i don't really know the answer to your initial question here, if I was going to give you advice, I would say wherever you live, look around at your local banks um, and, you know, go in that direction. And I think really banks are going to care more about like credit scores and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, now if if you're all your stuff, you know, if you have all your ducks in a row in terms of credit scores or whatever else it is that they that they need for you to do whatever business it is you want and then they come into the fact that you're doing it, you're opening a gun store or whatever it is, and that becomes a roadblock, then you you kind of know who you're dealing with. But there are gun stores around, and they get loans, and they're dealing with banks and all that, and it's okay. It's just start enough. small and don't get a loan. Yeah, true. And just go through the process of, mm -hmm. of just cash, paying everything cash. It, it's tough. Is that what you did lot. with when you guys? Yeah. Okay. I, I refuse to, to take out loans. I don't. I'm not a big mm -hmm. fan of owing people. Um, in life it, it happens, but, uh, I, I did not take out a loan at all. Mm -hmm. Um, it's basically, we, we threw in, 
um, I'd say close to ten thousand dollars that we had to save up money for. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we saved we, and we started off with non FFL items, magazines, and eighty percent mm-hmm. lowers and shit like that. And then mm-hmm. within a couple months, we were able to get that FFL and um, start buying the the big boy stuff and 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 get more shit. Uh, we're not doing the retail now, but for us, it, it was it was wonderful. And I see a lot of people do that stuff. They start at their house, mm-hmm. and they start off by doing something as simple as just processing transfers, just just mm-hmm. doing the that stuff and charging ten dollars for it and stuff like that. And a couple minutes later, like next thing you know, they 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 now have a, an inventory and they now have the the home shit. And then within a year, they're already in a small little location and. Um, there's one in Colorado Springs and I can't think the name, I, I forget the name of it, which, which sucks cause I, I could plug them, but mm-hmm. they started off tiny and now they just took over a village in an empty village in wow. and they, they, they're, they're competing. And then that's mm-hmm. within 10 years mm-hmm. that they've been able to do that stuff. So, yeah. Um, you know, I think that's really good advice, man. I mean, <laughs> it's really the best advice in the world. Start off small, do what you could do you know, work your way up. It's, you know, it doesn't seem the sexy way to do it, but lots of nah. folks out there um, do it. Kiaski says he lives five minutes away from Walter. So that's, you know, in that general Tampa area. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Walter may have some better, uh, you know, input on that. He's not on the show today, but if we get him back on, we can maybe ask him because he yeah. obviously is in the firearms business and, and maybe doing those kinds of things. But yeah, the only thing to do is to look around and ask. But I think, yeah, at the end of the day, start off small if you have to, you know, do it from home, build your way out, get a small business somewhere that you could afford, do things small and just build up. It's can you survive in this thing that you're doing, you know? And sometimes that's just picking yourself up by your bootstraps every day and hurling yourself out the door. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, it, it's definitely, there's definitely some times where it's like, what the fuck's next? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's scary and it, and it sucks. Mm-hmm. But I mean, mm-hmm. that's all the success stories, right? Where we're just mm-hmm. like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I mm-hmm. just did it. I went balls deep and, and here we are. And, and we're, we're successful. I, I think yeah. a lot of people have an issue when they're kind of like in between Mm-hmm. So you can't really push the business because you're like, no, I'm kind of, I'm, yeah. When you throw it all in there and you're just like, I'm just gonna roll the die and and, and fucking go balls deep. Like that's when that pressure comes in. And you're like, I have to make this work. Like mm-hmm. there's no, no plan B. Like this shit has to work. Yeah. It puts on a pressure on yourself that is just like you become desperate to to a degree. Mm-hmm. But in a good way, where where you're just like fuck, I'm gonna try all social media stuff. I'm gonna mm-hmm. post up. I'm gonna go, uh, whatever. I mean, just to plug. Life my is shit. more exciting just... with risk, man. Oh my god! You know, when you're out on that ship and you're in the ocean and it's like sink or swim. <laughs> <laughs> you go swim. <laughs> yeah, sink you, or swim. You, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, uh, you get to the island, you burn the ship. <laughs> no, we're yeah. we're here. This is where we're staying. We got to make <laughs> this, this happen. Yeah. yeah, you it's know, crazy. Yeah, fun rides. Fun yeah, rides. I would say I would I, I I would echo your advice to folks out there. It's what I did with all of this stuff. You know, Lola and I, we just started buying guns, man, and making videos. Didn't know anyone. Didn't have any friends. No one to put us on. Didn't know any companies. You know, and in and and so over what is this maybe like eight years we do know some companies we do some things with people or whatever but overall i think i still kind of like maintain that independence because i came into it like that you know so i don't really have any fear because i had to like you know kick my my, kick the door in and scratch and claw for everything or whatever and i feel like a lot of times i don't have the same kind of fears that other people have because if uh if people try to take me out they they can't do it i'm the only person that could take myself out (laughs) correct and there's nothing more beautiful than that it's just like i'm the only one that can fire myself yeah yeah it feels good yeah absolutely yeah so that's good advice good advice okay so listen we're gonna wrap this up um tony simon's not here so i'm gonna suggest you guys go check out tony simon uh 2a for everyone uh simon says train those are the things to look for if you're trying to find his uh, social media stuff he's on a podcast now somewhere 
that's kicked off. So you guys, when you get off here, you can go over there. Uh, make sure you smash the thumbs ups and all that before you get out of here. But let me go over to Edgar Antillion. Guns for everyone. Uh, tell the folks out there, how can they communicate with you? How can they support you? Uh, Guns for everyone everywhere on, on the social medias. Uh, Guns for everyone national as well. As far as supporting us, Really one of the things that we value the most in terms of, of support, obviously the money is amazing. It, it helps us continue with our free concealed carry classes and, and then on a national level with the training stuff, but nothing more than, than just letting people know and, and spreading the word. That, that's, that's, uh, that helps us out a lot, that word of mouth and, and just making other people aware that, that we exist. Mm -hmm. um, but everywhere on social media is just guns for everyone. Uh, pretty easy to find. Um, not that difficult. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It is. If you just Google guns for everyone, you're gonna you're gonna see it. So All you guys have all, huh? All kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Google Edgar and Tillion, you see, you know, your your life is an open story, man. You yeah, know? open story, yep. Yeah, you're you're out there for everyone. I I always appreciate you coming on, man. We have time goes by fast when you're here, you know. I appreciate that. Uh, same thing with Tony, you know, it's always fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, time always flies by. Um, and, and we've burned through some time here. I hope some, I hope the folks out there have gotten something out of it. I know I have. And, and also the last time you were on, you had COVID. So I'm glad to see that you're still, yeah, you made it. Through. Was crazy. I barely made it. But I don't even remember that. I was like, you know, okay, he might pass out right here on the show. <laughs> that's a blur. That, huh? was, <laughs> that was rough. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy times. And then the last time I actually saw you was here in Florida for the Libertarian thing. Correct. That was about a year ago, maybe. Is it? Is it a year already? Yeah. yeah we were hanging out with Maj and, uh, yeah, Trench Work Chronicles. And well, I'll be in Florida. Um, for that event. For June 19th, but I'm in Florida in a couple of weeks as well. So okay. March 15th to the 22nd, I'm going to be there. Okay. Uh, but you guys are further down south, right? No, I'm, I'm north. Gonna... I'm in north central Florida, so we're in the Gainesville area. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm gonna be in in the I'm gonna be in the Saint Augustine area again. Okay. In a couple of weeks, so maybe oh, okay. if I have enough time, I'll. Yeah, uh, I might be in just... Saint Augustine. I think not this weekend. Maybe next weekend because I'm supposed to do some stuff with my friend. I was talking about and uh, uh, Sam Andrews of Andrews Custom Leather. Oh, well. So I might be in the St. Augustine time. area on the weekend. Yeah, hit me up. Let me know. Yeah, you know, absolutely. we're going to be over there making videos and stuff like that, but, you know, we should might be able to link up. Easy. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, stay right there because I'm going to come back and give you the final word. So hopefully you have some words of wisdom to drop on the folks. Um, Latino Locked and Lotus said another enjoyable show. Um, you know, thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. The show has been fun. I know there was a little, a few couple, couple of speed bumps and stuff like that there with whatever was going on with the servers. We stay right there. I'm going to roll in, run in the end and we'll be right back. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Make sure you guys smash those thumbs ups here. Subscribe so that you can be notified every time we go live. Leave your comments and questions and all that. We will rip the audio out of this and throw it up on iTunes and all the other places that you listen to your audio podcast. Shout out to people around the world listening to us, which is awesome. And lots of good folks here in America as well. Um, Edgar, hit us with the final word, sir. Uh, I just want to encourage everybody to... To be, not be afraid and, and get involved and do the stuff. You are the two A. You are the the activist. You you are what's going to get us through all this stuff. So, don't be afraid to get involved and push that message. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. I I, I totally agree with that. Thanks so much, Edgar. We're out of here, guys. See you tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>